Phoenix and surrounding areas will be hot and dry today with temperatures expected to reach the mid-90s by 5 this afternoon. After that, temperatures will begin to drop with a nighttime low in the mid-60s. Most areas to the south and west of Phoenix can expect more heat for the next several days, while areas to the north and east should also expect rapidly developing thunderstorms. So if you're going to be hiking, biking, camping, or horseback riding, be aware that sudden downpours and flash floods are always a possibility at this time of year, and don't go into the wilderness areas unprepared. We've got several livestock auctions in the area tonight and tomorrow. Small animals, including goats, rabbits, and chickens, will be auctioned off at Barney Hall in Apache Junction with doors opening at 6 and bidding beginning at 7. Barney Hall is located at 1339 South North Street. Also tonight, there's a horse auction at Lobenthal Farms, located on Route 5 and Gilbert. Doors will open at 5 for stall inspection of sale animals. Bidding starts promptly at 7. At 10 a.m. tomorrow, that's 10 in the morning, folks, there'll be video cattle auction over in the Gemstone Room at the Blue Dog Hotel in Rittenhouse featuring Charlet and Angus breeding stock. Hear that? That's the sound of happy cattle, healthy cattle, cattle whose diet includes Big Pink Mineral Supplement, chelated for easy absorption. Big Pink is the perfect blend of calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, chlorine, potassium, sulfur, cobalt, copper, fluoride, iodine, iron, manganese, selenium, and zinc. Minerals no bovine should be without. So for big results, stock up on Big Pink now. Uh oh. Omaha? As in Nebraska? Very funny. Come on, where are you really? St. Louis? Tell me you're joking. The airport in Phoenix? Uh-oh. I'm not going to like this, am I? Hours? You're kidding. Well, at least they didn't cancel the flight. You're not going to believe this. That is a very good question. A lot. Mm, nothing much. Last night, Uncle Ed and Aunt Bet found a rattlesnake in their room. If you don't count the fact that last night Uncle Ed and Aunt Bet found a rattlesnake in their room, if you don't count the fact that last night the Raleigh's found a rattlesnake in their room, you're fogged in. More mechanical problems. You're fogged in and your plane's got more mechanical problems. I'm not sure what I should do next, which is why I think I'll go back out there first chance I get. Looks like our saboteur definitely has an accomplice. I'll be okay. I'm more worried about you guys. It'd sure be nice if you two were here with me. Oh no, why? Here we go again. No, but I'm pretty sure whoever it is is after Dirk Valentine's treasure. No, but I have a gut feeling that whoever it is is after Dirk Valentine's treasure. Not yet, but I think I am getting close to finding Dirk Valentine's treasure, which means if I can find the treasure, I can put a stop to the sabotage. And I think I'm in the home stretch. Apparently last night, this glowing horse came galloping up out of nowhere, caused a huge commotion, then went galloping off and disappeared. Evidently, it was pretty spooky. It looked like it was glowing. The cook, Shorty Thurman, he says the phantom horse belonged to this outlaw named Dirk Valentine who was hanged back in the 1880s. Don't you think it's kind of odd how that rattlesnake showed up in the Raleigh's bedroom right after that phantom horse showed up outside? Dave said when the horse appeared, everyone ran outside to look. I think it was more like a well-planned distraction. Has either of you two ever read anything by an author named Charlena Purcell? I found a half-burned note that had a bunch of gibberish on it in the fire pit. That's just what I was thinking. Or maybe someone just felt like writing down a bunch of gibberish. Would you believe I found a letter that Dirk Valentine wrote to Francis Humber? It said that Dirk hid a bunch of his loot somewhere. The letter may explain what the deal is with that phantom horse. I finally went for a trail ride, and she trains horses in her spare time. Apparently, she wants to buy some land from the Raleigh's that they don't want to sell. I found a locket that belonged to Francis Humber. It had a picture in it with the words green bottle under, written on the back. I doubt it. Could be. Have I told you about the cowboys that work for the Raleigh's? Tex Britton, the head wrangler? The Raleigh's fired his sister when they lived in Phoenix. Tex Britton, the head wrangler? I'm pretty sure the Raleigh's fired his sister when they lived in Phoenix. Tex Britton, the head wrangler? He has a sister named Jane Nash, and I found a letter to the Raleigh's from a Jane Nash in their desk. Shorty the cook admitted that he's been checking out the area around Shadow Ranch for lost gold mines. I found a green bottle with a bunch of love letters from Dirk to Francis inside. I found an old beaded handbag that may have belonged to Francis Humber. How about some hints? I wish I knew what my next move should be. I'm not sure how to go 
go about building an outdoor cooking fire like Shorty asked me to. Any hints? Any hint as to how to tell ripe vegetables from unripe ones? I need a hint about how to repair that egg basket. There's a secret compartment at the back of the blanket chest in the den. Any hints as to how to open it? I'd love to see what's inside this old trunk at Mary's, but I need a hint when it comes to opening it. I found a locket watch in that old trunk at Mary Yazzie's, but I don't know how to open it. Any hints? I could sure use a hint when it comes to using that piece of paper Dirk left for Francis to keep track of where the rock pictures are. I'm stumped when it comes to finding that green bottle under stairs to cellar. How about a hint? Any hints when it comes to sorting those rings at Mary's? The message those petroglyphs spelled out is pretty weird. Got any hints? Any hint as to what that riddle I found in the piano means? That's it for now. Oh, and thanks for sending me that bead pattern. It looks like I'm going to need a magnet. Any hints as to where I might find one around here? How about a hint that'll help me figure out where Zebra Rock is? That fence repair job is harder than I thought it would be. How about a hint? I could sure use a hint when it comes to the puzzle I found under that striped rock. I found some kind of music box, but I can't seem to open it. How about a hint? The message Dirk left for Francis in that jail cell is just a bunch of hash marks. Any hint as to what they mean? I could use a hint when it comes to that letter Dirk left for Francis under the bank lamp. I need a hint when it comes to winding up the dancer that's inside the music box. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with this petroglyph map. Any hints? Any hint as to what I should do with this rock Dirk left for Francis? Mary polished that agate for me, but when it comes to knowing what to do with it, <laughs> I need a hint. It looks like there's another compartment in the locket watch I found. I'd like to open it, but I could use a hint. I'm trying to decide what I should do now. I'm lost when it comes to Francis's favorite flowers and the flowers on her favorites. Hint, please? Francis's favorite flowers are still tripping me up. How about a hint? I need another hint when it comes to those flowers. I could sure use a hint when it comes to Francis's favorite flowers. Trying to figure out what flowers to enter in that music box is driving me nuts. Any more hints? If you guys have another hint when it comes to Francis's favorite flowers, I'd sure like to hear it. It has a very weird three-hole locking mechanism on it. To open it, I need to put these wrenches in these three holes. But I don't know in which directions they need to be pointing. The lock seems to have something to do with this image that's engraved on the trunk right above it. How will knowing that help me open the trunk? Those numbers must have something to do with the directions in which those wrenches need to be pointing. Why do you know so much about the Humbers? What do you think? happened to it. Actually, I may know what happened to it. I have reason to believe that it is. I think I know why she never found it. Well, I'm going to try to figure it out anyway. So, you think it's hopeless? I opened that trunk and found a locket watch in it that used to belong to Francis. I was kind of hoping you'd know. It looks like the rest of the sentence is on the half that got torn off. Do you know anything about Dry Creek? I came across a reference to someone whom Dirk referred to as Pappy. Would you happen to know the brand name of crackers back in the 1880s whose slogan was Even the Crumbs Are Crisp? Uh, no. But Aunt Beth has. She's a big fan. Well, now let me think. Will you still find out about the crackers if I say no? I came across something that looks like a very old token and has the words Dry Creek Merchants on it. You mean, like gambling? What kind of games? Talk to you soon. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> oh my gosh. <coughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to sneak up on you, but... What are you doing? Where did you come from? Then you lied before when you said you didn't know who Dirk Valentine was. What do you know about it? How long have you known about it? I didn't know this place had a cellar. How long have you been digging around down here? What do the Raleigh's think about all this? The Raleigh's never mentioned a secret door. I understand, but now I'm in kind of an awkward position. It is their property. What about all the accidents that have been happening around here lately? You haven't been using that phantom horse to try to scare the Raleigh's off so you can hunt for Valentine's treasure in peace? Missed. Darn! <gasps> That's not it. Oh. Hmm. Nope. Something's missing. Perfect. Very good. Ugh. This goes here. That doesn't go there. There. That looks right. <gasps> Oops. That doesn't look right. Ta-da! So far, so good. I'm getting there. That doesn't make sense. I don't think so. Nah, can't be that. Oh, yeah. Yes! Oh, yeah. Nuts! Not right now. I wonder how you open this. Not yet. I thought I'd do a little poking around first. <laughs> Oops. Uh, no. I sure did.
Do you think Ed's gonna be all right? Yes, I'm supposed to go ahead and have a good time and not worry about Ed. Which is a lot easier said than done. Because of that cellar thing, you don't have to be embarrassed. As long as you level with the Raleigh's like you said you would. Don't worry about it. I've been known to do a few sneaky type things from time to time myself. Shorty told me about the phantom horse that appeared just before it happened. Did you see it too? Tex told me about the phantom horse that appeared just before it happened. Did you see it too? Beth said something about a phantom horse. Do you know what she was talking about? I heard that a phantom horse appeared just before it happened. Did you see it too? You bet. Uh, that kind of depends on what it is. How do you think that snake got into their room? It was glowing and no one was riding it? You're sure? Could somebody have put it there? Has anything like that ever happened here before? I don't know. Why do you ask? I'm sorry. Am I bugging you? Amateur detective. It's just kind of a hobby. Their niece, Bess Marvin? She told them that, and she exaggerates. Have you ever seen anything like that before? Do you think it was some kind of practical joke? Why not? How do you know? It might. I doubt it. Will the wire get here before it gets dark? Are you going to tell me how to patch it? How do you think that rattlesnake wound up in the Raleigh's bedroom? How long have you worked here? Tex seems a little ornery. That shorty sure likes to talk, doesn't he? What do you know about the phantom horse that appeared last night. The Raleigh's asked me to take something out to Mary Yazzie's, but it's in the den in the roll-top desk, which is locked. They said you had the key? I found a letter that may have been written by Dirk Valentine to Francis Humber way back in the 1880s. What do you know about them? The letter made it sound like Dirk was sending Francis on some kind of treasure hunt. It suggested that Dirk had buried something very valuable around here. May I see that letter you said Francis Humber wrote to your great aunt? May I see that letter Francis Humber wrote to your great aunt again? I'm pretty sure I saw Mary Yazzie riding on the Raleigh's property. Have you ever seen her riding around here? It seems that Mary Yazzie and Tex have a thing for each other. That's what Mary said. I don't think she'd lie about something like that, do you? They're keeping it hush-hush because Tex is afraid the Raleigh's might not approve. Where was the jail that Dirk Valentine stayed in after he was arrested? Do you have any idea? Is it far from here? Could you tell me how to get there? I talked to my friends, Bess and George. Their plane's been delayed. They aren't sure when they're going to get here. Did your great aunt, by any chance, leave you a ring? I know this is a lot to ask, but do you think I could borrow it for a while? It's kind of a long story. To tell you the absolute truth, I'm not really sure. Last time I was in the ghost town, somebody clobbered me over the head and locked me up in the old jail. No, I never got a look at him, or her, or them, or whatever. No, but I have a sneaking suspicion it may be bank robbers who've been using the town to lie low. No problem. Great. Steady? You mean boyfriend? Uh, well, sort of. What about you? Do you have a girlfriend? Uh, that depends on why you want to know. I'll let you get back to work. <coughs> Who'd you think I was? Am I calling at a bad time? Oops, your client's still bugging you? I can't tell if you're happy to be talking to me or just happy not to be talking to laptop guy. What do you mean? What does he want you to do? Why not? Of course you can. It showed up right after the phantom horse. Could be. I doubt it. The Raleigh's, you know, Bess and George's aunt and uncle? They're missing. I thought I'd call you. Good question. The Raleigh's aren't here because Mr. Raleigh was bitten by a rattlesnake last night. This one was in their bedroom. Apparently, they've also got a phantom horse. Turns out Mrs. Raleigh wasn't the only one who saw a phantom horse last night. I've got an idea what the person or persons behind the phantom horse is after. Buried treasure would explain why someone is trying so hard to chase the Raleigh's off their ranch. I'm pretty sure Francis never found it. Did I mention that Francis Humber's father was the sheriff who arrested Dirk Valentine? He was just about the worst villain that ever set foot in Arizona, according to Francis's father. He was just a high-spirited young man who loved to take risks, according to Charlena Purcell. As usual, I seem to be surrounded by suspects. The cook, Shorty, the head wrangler, Tex, the woman who owns the gift shop, Mary, the ranch foreman, Dave. There's a real honest-to-goodness ghost town near here. I heard strange noises. I saw something that makes me think bank robbers from Denver may be hiding out there. I'm positive that whoever's been hanging around the ghost town is connected to all the stuff that's been happening at the ranch. So in your twisted world, Joe, being a victim of foul play is a good thing? But I still don't know who or why. I saw a strange-looking hoofprint today. 
I have a feeling it belonged to that phantom horse. Catch you later. It's locked. Is it unusual for an ordinary citizen to request a map like that? Is there any chance you might remember talking to that particular person? How likely do you think it is that Shorty will find any gold around Shadow Mountain? Do your notes say anything else? Hi, are you Mary Yazzie? My name's Nancy Drew. I'm staying at Shadow Ranch. Not quite yet. Apparently my eyes aren't as sharp as I thought they were. I finished that display for you. All done. I wrote here. I'm Nancy Drew. Bob brought me. He's a horse. My name's Nancy. How did you hear about it? So you know the Raleigh's? Shadow Ranch with Ed and Elizabeth Raleigh. In fact, I have something for you. Here, I have something for you. You probably know everyone in the valley, don't you? Oops, I almost forgot. That's more than I can say. I haven't even met them yet. Oops, I almost forgot. That's kind of what Tex said, too. And by it, you mean... You're what? Right. You're in love. What's the big deal? Why do you think you have to keep your love for each other a secret? Is that what you were doing on the ranch when I saw you? Meeting Tex? The Raleigh's wouldn't do that. Why are you so interested in that property? Knowing Tex, that does make sense. So how did you get past his rough, tough loner thing? Is that you riding that beautiful Palomino in the picture over there? What else can he do? You train horses? I understand that you bought a trunk full of junk from the Raleigh's recently. Have you asked the Raleigh's about it? May I take a look at it? Are there many petroglyphs around here? That's a pretty big hunk of petrified wood over there. Where'd you get it? Have you by any chance ever come across any silverware that may have belonged to Dirk Valentine's girlfriend, Francis? You know, knives and spoons and... Forks? I found a letter that referred to Francis Humber's forks. Do you have any idea what that means? I noticed some tuning forks over there. Would it be okay if I borrowed them for a while? You got a deal. But I've never found an arrowhead in my life. I already have ten arrowheads. See? I saw you riding earlier near Shadow Ranch. Do you ride around there a lot? I'm sure the Raleigh's don't mind if you ride on their land. Whoever I saw was riding a Palomino that looked just like yours. Tex told me about, you know. You and him? Yeah, I kind of tricked him into telling me. I'd like to hear your side of the story now. Do you know anything about the treasure Dirk Valentine supposedly buried somewhere around Shadow Ranch? What makes you so sure? Some people would disagree with you. What's in that old trunk over there? May I take a closer look at it? He collected them? Did he know how to play them? I found this piece of rock in the desert. I'd really like to get the scuff marks off of it. I won something that looks like a token when I played that game over there. What is it? I'd like to recreate the beadwork that was on this bag. Only it looks like I need a lot of different beads. Sounds good. Fair enough. Any luck finding those beads? Great, thanks. I managed to recreate the beadwork on that purse. What kind of flower do you think this is? Is that old trunk over there the one you bought from the Raleigh's? I won some things that look like tokens when I played that game over there. What are they? Why are you so interested in buying that property from the Raleigh's? It was great talking to you. Is everything all right? Nobody around here will tell me anything. Did you say rattlesnake? Don't tell me you're at the hospital. Where? How bad? What can I do to help you? Would you rather that Bess and George and I postpone our visit? I'll do it right away. Did you say I'd have to ride there? I'd love to. Is there an address on the envelope? I'm more inclined to think that someone is using that horse to divert attention. That's what someone wants you to think, Aunt Bet. Someone may be trying to chase you off the ranch. Could someone be trying to get back at you for something? Can you think of anyone who might have a grudge against you? Can you think of any reason why someone might want you off the ranch? How old was she? Do you have any idea who this brother is that she mentioned in her letter? Has Tex ever said anything to you about her? Are you a Charlena Purcell fan? As it turns out, I talked to Charlena Purcell recently. I delivered that envelope to Mary Yazzie like you asked. She seemed a little upset when she read that you'd turned her down. What does she want the property for? Is that the first time she's tried to buy it from you? I heard about the phantom horse. Was last night the first time it showed up? Do you have any idea where the horse came from? Do you have any idea how that snake got into your room? Why do you have a painting of Francis Humber? What did you do with it? Was any of it valuable? It doesn't look like Bess and George are going to get here today. He seems a little standoffish. Dave's okay, but Tex is a different story. I noticed a letter in your roll-top desk from someone named Jane Nash. Are you aware that there's a secret door behind the bookcase in the den? He's supposed to have hidden a treasure somewhere. 
somewhere around here. I just wondered if you'd ever come across anything that belonged to him. Did you by any chance send Dave on an errand last night? Do you by any chance have an anniversary or something coming up? It sounds to me like Uncle Ed may be trying to surprise you. I'll be in touch. It won't open. Guess I have to have a key. The Raleigh said I need to get the key from Dave. Now it'll open. It might help if I use the key. Maybe I'd better leave this here. Maybe I'd better keep this. Thanks for letting me see it. Dave? I'll call back later. Stairs to cellar. Green bottle under stairs to cellar. Maybe the message on the pictures refers not to the stairs to the den, but to these stairs. I'd better cinch the girth before I do anything else. I should put the saddle on first. The mounting block is over here. <coughs> the hitching post is over here. <sighs> Time to get off. Better hook him back up first. Since I put it on last, I should take the bridle off first. Tex said to put the saddle and bridle back where I got it. Okay, Bob. What do you say we do some sightseeing? Uh-oh. I'd better put that back. Oh, my gosh. Jane Nash is Tex's sister. Looks like Tex has a sister named Jane Nash. Sounds like this Jane Nash person has it out for the Raleighs. Jane Nash? Tex's sister? That's an odd-looking hoof print. There's another one of those weird hoof prints. That horse she wasn't there before. Maybe the ghost horse threw it while it was running away last night. I'll bet this is the shoe that made that odd-looking hoof print I saw before. I'll bet this is the shoe that made those odd-looking hoof prints I saw before. That looks like Mary Yazzie. That looks like Mary Yazzie. And Tex? All right! Now I can get my own lariat. What a beautiful horse. Hmm. The Raleigh sold a trunk full of junk to somebody named Mary Yazzie. Hmm. The Raleigh sold a trunk full of junk to Mary Yazzie. Would you mind if I tried to get this open? Please do. In fact, if you get it open, I'll let you keep something from it. You can have your pick. I got the trunk open. Great. Thank you. Go ahead and take something from it. You deserve a reward. Some cloth. If I want something else from the trunk, I should put back what I took before. A pan, a watch, and a locket combined. Pretty. A thermos, an old badge, scissors, an arrowhead. Wow! The ladder's broken. If I had a rope, I could lasso that rock and pull myself up. If I had a rope, I could lasso that tree branch and pull myself up. I could lasso that tree branch and pull myself up. Hmm. Tex said to leave his rope in the corral. Ouch! Ow! Hey, that wasn't very nice. Oh, no! There's a hole in it. I'd better make sure I didn't miss any. Voila! I'd better take these eggs to Shorty before I drop them or something. I'd better take these vegetables to Shorty while they're still fresh. Mineral deposits? What was that? An electrician's manual. Wonder what that's doing here. Looks like someone's been hanging out in here. No, wait. You don't have to leave. Oh, my gosh. I still haven't made that cake like Shorty asked me to. Can't hurt to have that phone number. Bank robbers? If I ask, maybe Mary will let me borrow these. The initials on this trunk. Whose are they? Do you know? I have no idea. First thing I'll need to make that cake is a mixing bowl. I don't need the saddle, just the gloves. Oh my gosh, my gloves. They're glowing. I have enough of those. I have enough of that. Perfect. Oh, bummer. Oh, bummer. Looking good. Super. Sweet. Nice. V must stand for Valentine. So someone else is looking for what Dirk hid for Francis. I need more kindling. I'm not done yet. Something goes here. Something else goes here. Not yet. Green tinted sunglasses. Francis Humber. Wonder who she was. Francis Humber. So that's what she looked like. Green bottle under... Hmm, wonder what that means. Even the crumbs are crisp. Beneath Cappy's keys, Pappy's name, please. No signal. It wouldn't be safe to use my cell phone while I'm writing. I shouldn't use my phone right in front of somebody. Uh-oh. Do you think I could have a piece of cake? Sure. Help yourself. Tex really liked it, by the way. Tuning forks. Maybe Dirk meant tuning forks. That's not an arrowhead. It's just a rock. Three down, seven to go. Only three more to go. 
ten arrowheads. I'm all done. That trunk looks really old. Maybe I need to learn more about the history of this trunk. Maybe that heart design is some kind of clue. If I could find out who made this thing, it might help me get it open. There. That looks right. This is going to look great. I'm getting there. Almost done. There. Am I good or what? That's not enough batter to make a cake. Yikes! Oh no! It's not cooked all the way through. I better bake it some more. Oops! Looks like I'm gonna have to guess how long to cook it and what temperature to use. I better see how the cake I have in the oven turns out before I try to make another one. Perfect. Nuts, I burned it. Well, back to the drawing board. Maybe I should try a little, just to be sure. Mm. <coughs> this tastes terrible. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> this tastes terrible. I better throw this out and make another one. I better throw this out and make another one. Mm. Oh, yum. This is delicious. I'll leave that there. That looks right. Ah. Okay. What are these? I made you that flour Frances mentioned in her recipe. I cut all the pieces out of marzipan using her old forms, but I'll be darned if I can figure out how the pieces go. Well, let's see. I'll put this piece here. I should put that icing Shorty made on it. Beautiful. What's this? That's food coloring so you can paint that marzipan flower. What's this? Food coloring so you can paint that marzipan flower when you're done putting it together. What marzipan flower? I made you that flower Frances mentioned in her recipe. I cut all the pieces out of marzipan using her old forms, but I'll be darned if I can figure out how the pieces go. I can't paint the flower until I have it all put together. Done. Ah! Wonder who wrote this. There, one extremely well-built campfire, if I do say so myself. I'll work on that later. Oops, Dave said to wear gloves. I need pliers to do this. I should split all the wood first. We'll need more supplies if ranch isn't empty soon. Check bookcase again. Dirk might have hidden it right under Sheriff's nose. This must be the message Dirk left for Francis. Under bank lamp. This must be some kind of lock. Looks like I need a key to open it. Bingo! Let's see. This petroglyph goes here. V. For Valentine, no doubt. That should do it. <gasps> Sorry, coyotes. No chicken dinner for you tonight. There. Just call me Nancy Paul Bunyan Drew. Looks like a secret compartment. There we go. Oh, my gosh. That trail looks just like the one on the agate. Darn. Yes! Looks like I need to put in a password. There's a letter down there. I'm locked in. Looks like I need some kind of coin. Here we go. There's something inside. The beads on this thing probably used to make a picture, but they sure don't now. Looks like it's written in code. I don't think that's enough. Unless I want to lug this bucket around with me all day, I should go feed what's in it to one of the horses. Missed. Gotcha. Yeehaw! I'd better check every single nest. A blue egg. Cool. I'd better fix this basket before I try to collect any more eggs. Otherwise, they'll just fall out and break. Yikes! Maybe I'll come back when she's not in such a foul mood. Ow! 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 Hey, you're crowding me here, Nancy. I need elbow room when I cook. Sorry. I better not go in there until I call the sheriff. <gasps> I still need to get the envelope I'm supposed to take to Mary Yazzie out of the roll-top desk. This doesn't look like it was ever opened. <sighs> I'd better try that again. This should work. Hmm. Sounds hollow. I wonder if those three holes are some kind of lock. Hmm. Sounds hollow. Tuning forks. Cool. Looks like a music box. Oh my gosh. Dirk must have made a hole in the rock, then covered it over with mud. It's a rock. Too bad it's so scuffed up. The scale only goes up to 10 pounds. Looks like I need a wind-up key. Oops. It might help if I set the time. Oops. I can't very well bake a cake without setting the temperature. There it is. Dirk Valentine's treasure. Solid gold hearts. Guess I'd better take it with me. Uh-oh. That's way too far to jump. I'm going to have to think of something else. Whoa! That was close. I better put that back or I could get really lost. I'm not quite done yet. I need more tinder. That's not enough tinder. I need to start with tinder. It's a fire pit. This must be where Shorty wants me to build a campfire. Almost done. Those are too big. Paper won't make those logs catch fire. What I need is some kindling. Hello? Who's there? Is somebody out there? I'm ready. Fire away. Whoever clobbered me must have dropped this. Acid. 
Wonder what somebody's been using that for. The shape of this box looks familiar. I saw a design just like that in Cappy's. Maybe I'm supposed to do something with it there. That doesn't look right. I'd better start over. I'll try this again later. Okay, there's the head stall. Now, let's see. Looks like I won some kind of old coin. Cool, an old token or something. Another one for my collection. Sure be nice if these were good for something. Another piece of Dry Creek script. I don't want to lug this saddle around all day. I should put it back. Maybe this is the key to the jail cell. Oh, I was right. It's hot. Phew. Talk about your scorchers. Oh, man. No wonder I'm sweating. My antiperspirant's going to get a workout today. I didn't know thermometers went up that high. I'll let someone else eat the last piece. Well, shall I try it again? Do I want to try this again now or wait till later? I've gotten this far. I might as well keep going. Might as well finish what I've started. I might as well try baking this batter. I'm almost done. Once I bake this batch of batter, I can take a break. M.H. Meryl Humber, maybe? F. H. Francis Humber? Looks like the pipe was pretty badly corroded. It's locked. So much for finding out what Dirk left in the cell for Francis. The stuff I saw in here before is gone. Looks like I scared somebody off. Well, here I am at Charlie's grave. Okay, chickens, come and get it. Ancient cliff dwellings. Awesome. There's got to be a way to stop Shorty. Think. If there was just some way to trick Shorty into going through that door that has nothing but a cliff on the other side of it. I know. I could switch the marker that's over the good door with the one that's over the door that leads to the cliff. Dirk told Francis to keep track of the rock picture she saw by using this map. Another petroglyph for my map. This one's not on my map yet. Here's a new one. Now how am I going to get up there? I should go read Dirk's poem again. Since I can't see what's going on, maybe I should try using my ears. Maybe if I just listen real closely. That flower looks kind of like a poppy. Maybe I'd better go back and read that letter Dirk sent to Francis from jail again. This is Charlie's grave. Maybe I'd better go back and read that poem Dirk left for Francis again. This thing is just too scuffed up. Maybe I can get it polished somewhere. I need to talk to someone who can tell me who Pappy was. That reminds me of something. Maybe it would help to reread the letter that Dirk wrote to Francis when he was locked in here. This has to be some kind of code. Maybe the number each hash mark represents somehow represents a letter. Something tells me that if I move the piece that has Francis's initials on it, I'll be all set. Close, but no cigar. Rats, I was this close. Just missed. Try, try again. Do over. That's more like it. Yes! No signal. Looks like all my cell phone is good for out here is reading old emails. No signal. Looks like all my cell phone is good for in here is reading old emails. No signal. Looks like all my cell phone is good for here is reading old emails. The daisy stitch. It's a tulip. Sunflower crackers. I'm not quite done. That's not quite right. Better not leave old Bob behind. Heck, why walk when I can ride? I think I'll let Bob do the walking. Looks like I'm back in the den. I shouldn't pick any vegetables until I have something to put them in. I don't need to pick anything else today. I don't need to talk to anyone at home. It's Nancy. Just calling to say hi. You don't need to call me back. Bye. Hi, Hannah. Bye, Hannah. Yikes. Falling down there would not be fun. There. Now I'd better hide. If I could just think of a way to get Shorty to go through that door over there, he might just fall down that hole. I can't get my map out now. I'll just remember the petroglyphs I see and check my map later. Oh, that tree looks just like the one on the agate. I think I'll grab Bob and head out in that direction. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. No sense going in there without a horse to ride. Well, hello there. You got some friends back there? Hi there. You two aren't too shabby looking either. Good boy. Whoa, easy. Come on. Giddy up. Atta boy. Come on, Bob. Oops. Sounds like I've got an email. Better check my phone. Sounds like I've got another email. Wrong key for that cell. Yikes. The walls in there look like they could fall down any second. That won't work. I should probably feed him before I put his saddle on. I haven't done that yet. Can't check that off till it's done. Can't check that off yet. That's done. I'm finished with that. Check. Probably just a bird. Hmm. That's not the right time. 
must be broken. Maybe I can get one from Tex. I'll bet Dirk Custom made this, which means I better not go messing around in there. I'm getting the definite feeling I'm not alone. I just saw something move in there. I'm going to keep playing this game until I win, darn it. I'll just have to get another token and play again. If I don't keep playing, I'll never win anything. If I keep playing, I'm bound to win eventually. I'd better leave that here and let the sheriff decide what to do with it. This outline reminds me of something. The shape of this box sure looks familiar. Hello? Is someone there? Yoo-hoo! Hey, who's there? I could have sworn I saw something move in there. Did I just see something move over there? Wonder what that was. That wasn't there before. I've just about got it. This would be a lot easier if I had the pattern. That looks just about right. Oh no! Now I'm going to be stuck in here forever. Whoops, that's not good. I'm in the jail cell. I'll bet that's the key. I need to knock that key off the wall somehow. These old bricks must be good for something. I need to do something about that hole. If I could lasso that chair, maybe I could use it to cover that hole. It might help if I lassoed that chair. With that chair there, that key only has one place to go. Come to Mama. That should be enough bricks for now. That powder in the ghost town. Tex must have turned the horses out for the night. Yeah, yeah! Okay, Bob, let's go! Here we go! Better not go messing around in there. More kindling. Looks like I need to put these together. I need another one. Tuning forks. Maybe Dirk meant tuning forks. If I ask, maybe Mary will let me borrow these. I need more keys. I should take the saddle off first. It won't do any good. Arrowheads won't help. Too bad the decorations have fallen off. I need something to put the fire out. Interesting. I don't want to die from thirst. Hmm. I don't think I need that right now. I don't want to cut my hands. Better safe than sorry. I need something that will attract metal. I need some wood to set the logs on fire. I need some paper for the campfire. I need something to hold it together. I need a key. Tex would have a cow if I rode bareback. I need the key to open it. Something goes here. I need some tools. Whatever. I need something that will keep the fire going. I don't need that right now. It would be rude to use it now. This is not the right time. I can't get in there right now. Someone might hear me. I need a rope. Not that. I don't want to throw that. Hmm. Welcome to my latest case, The Secret of Shadow Ranch. To start, choose Junior or Senior Detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, choose Gameplay Overview. Okay. As always, your mission is to solve the mystery. You're going to step into my shoes and be my eyes and ears. It will be up to you to decide my every move. Click on Next to continue. When you're in the center of a room, you can turn around in a circle to see the whole room. Move your cursor to the left or right edge of the screen and you'll automatically move in that direction. You can turn off this auto move feature in the Game Options menu. A forward arrow allows you to advance in the direction you want to go. Likewise, a back arrow allows you to take a step back. Sometimes up and down arrows are available too. Give it a try. Find the forward arrow and check out that American Quarter Horse poster. I always carry my magnifying glass with me to scan for clues. When it turns red, I know I'm on to something. Move your mouse until the magnifying glass turns red. Then click to zoom in. When you want to go back to where you came from or turn around, Find where your cursor turns into an arrow at the bottom of the screen and click. Try it. When the magnifying glass becomes a hand, you can use it to open and close things, pick up objects, and move things around. Now turn to the right and take a step over to the hat. See how the magnifying glass turned into a hand when you rolled it over the hat? That means you can pick the hat up. Click on it and see what happens. Good work. You're a natural. You just picked up the hat and added it to your toolbox. Now click on the key. To see what's in your toolbox, just click on the tool icon at the bottom of the screen, which will light up whenever you've added something new. If the Alt tab is active, you'll see all the objects you've collected during the game. Now click on the tab with the eye on it. When the eye tab is active, you'll see only those objects which you might want to look at over and over again, like letters or messages. Now click on the hand tab. When the hand tab is active, you'll see the objects that you can use to manipulate other objects. Find the key in your toolbox and click on it. See how the cursor turned into the item you clicked on? 
If this were the game and you clicked somewhere on the screen, like, say, on a lock, you could use the key to unlock it. To return an object to your toolbox, just click on the tool icon, then click on the Open Toolbox and the object will go back into storage. You can close the toolbox by clicking on the square in the upper right-hand corner. And if you need to call someone, all you have to do is click on the cell phone at the bottom of the screen. Try it. You can use this phone to dial a number yourself, or you can automatically dial any of the numbers stored in the directory. You can also receive emails and browse the web. For more information, just click on the phone's Help button. Close the phone by clicking on the square in the upper right-hand corner. Another thing, the phone icon in the taskbar will light up whenever you have a new email to read, a new number you can dial, or a new website to look at. The notepad at the bottom of the screen is where I keep reminders to myself. Click on it and you'll see what I mean. If the book tab is active, you'll see my journal, which is where I keep all my observations concerning information I've gathered and people I've met. If you click on the clipboard with a check mark, you'll see a list of what I need to do. Organized person that I am, once I've done something, I check it off. Is that everything? Oh, I almost forgot one of the most important detective skills. You know, questioning suspects. In the game, you can talk to the people you meet. The conversation will appear in the text box below the scene. The words of the person you're talking to will be in blue, and my replies will be in white. Select a question or a reply by clicking on it and listen to what your suspect says next. Give it a try. Excuse me, miss, but I couldn't help but notice that you're doing an awful lot of snooping around. Excuse me, sir, but I don't snoop. I sleuth. Who, me? Oh, no, I wasn't snooping. I was just looking for a dictionary. I keep forgetting how to spell perpetrator. And I couldn't help but notice that you're dressed like a chicken. What's up with that? If there are a lot of words in the text box, you know how some people can talk. Use the box to the left to move the text up and down so that you can read along. Hang in there. We're almost done. If you make a major mistake, say you fall off a roof or blow something up, you can select Second Chance from the main menu to get back to where you were before you goofed. If you ever feel like talking to someone you know you can trust, you can always call my good friends Bess and George. In this game, you can call Frank and Joe Hardy, a.k.a. the Hardy Boys, too. And if you get stuck and don't know what to do next, you can ask them for hints. So, that's it. You're ready to tackle the case. I'll return you to the menu screen where you can start the game. Junior Detective is not quite as tough as a senior level, so you might want to start there. Oh, and to make sure the world you're about to enter looks as good as it possibly can, adjust the brightness of your screen by choosing Game Options, then sliding Gamma Adjust to the left or right. You never know what you'll turn up in the game, so be sure to explore. Don't forget to trust your instincts and have fun. Good luck! And if you get stuck and don't know what to do next, you can ask them for hints. Junior Detective is not quite as tough as a senior level, so you might want to start there. Well, I have, and I still can't believe what happened to Ed. If I did, I'd be lying. How come? Me too. It'll be nice to talk to them in person. Right here. No problem. You betcha. Take a look. Right. Oops. I was just going. I'm embarrassed that you caught me snooping through your stuff. I'd like to apologize. When the power company turned off the power, did they say when they'd be out to fix the lines? Things aren't that bad. I have a question about the cake I'm baking. You bet I can. There is? I can? You bet there is. Wrong. Is that important? I also heard about that horse. What did you see last night? Of course not. I guess not. Why do you want to talk to me so badly? I just wanted to look around a little first. You got it. Dirk Valentine? A phantom horse? Ouch. Something tells me this story does not have a happy ending. You don't really believe that, do you? What a great story. You like to gossip, don't you? Most people think I'm too nosy. Uh, nobody really. You really think what happened to the pump house was the result of bad luck? I'm inclined to think that someone, not something, is responsible for the damage to the pump house. Just hang in there. I have a feeling that all this is going to be over soon. You can't leave, Shorty. That's exactly what whoever's behind all these accidents wants. Actually, I already did that.
See? Got him right here. Tex said I should get a canteen from you and see if there are any chores you'd like me to do. You bet I do. No, but don't worry. I'll find out. Got any chores you want me to do? Want me to do anything before I go riding? Do you think I could get a canteen of water from you? Have you ever met Mary Yazzie? Do you know anything about the piece of property she's been trying to buy from the Raleigh's? What about Dave Gregory? He's so quiet. I can't tell if he's being secretive or just shy. Have you been out to the pump house? What do you know about the treasure that Dirk Valentine supposedly hid? around here for Francis Humber to find. I just heard about it, that's all. Nothing really. But what makes you so sure he didn't stash any of his loot here? Could I get a canteen of water from you? Got any chores you want me to do before I go riding? I already picked all the ripe vegetables. See? Got all the ripe vegetables right here. Well, I'd better get going. No, actually, I pretty much found everything on my own. You heard what happened to him? It sounds like he's going to be okay. I know. I never got a chance to talk to you. What's your take on what happened to the pump house? And the phantom horse? So you think it was an accident? Thanks for your help. Would it be all right if I looked around in the pump house? Did you hear about the phantom horse that showed up at Shadow Ranch last night? Do you know most of the men who work at Shadow Ranch? Do you go out to the ghost town very much? The person responsible for the phantom horse has been hiding out in the ghost town. I'm almost positive. I think someone is trying to chase the Raleigh's off their ranch, first with a snake, then by sabotaging their water supply, and now by cutting off their electricity. And I'm almost positive that whoever they are, they're conspiring with one of the hands at the ranch. When I was in the ghost town this morning, someone knocked me out, then locked me in a jail cell. I noticed that you put a lock on one of the buildings in the ghost town. So you're the one who's been sabotaging the ranch. You went to a lot of trouble for nothing. The treasure's gone. That's what you think. Nah. I think I'll go get the sheriff and let him help you off of there. Just below its knees. Just above its hooves. On its front legs. On its back legs. Between its ears. On the bottom of its hoof. Just above its tail. In its water bucket. Four feet. Fifty-five inches. Five feet. Two yards. A gated horse. A paint horse. A quarter horse. A draft horse. It keeps lying down, then standing up. It stands very still. It whinnies all the time. It keeps burping. A chestnut is light brown. A bay is light brown. A bay has black points. A chestnut has black points. The Nez Pierce. The Sioux. The Algonquin. The Navajo. Its ears. Its stomach. Its feet. Its back. The cinch. The cantle. The stirrup. The horn, a horse that's very stubborn, the offspring of a male horse and a female donkey. A pack horse, the offspring of a female horse and a male donkey. I think so. You bet. Ask me something else. I think I'll take a break. I'm ready. Excuse me, the nice one? Not really. Just some answers to a couple of questions. <laughs> Oops. Uh, no, sir. You sound surprised. Should I be somewhere else? Why didn't you tell me that before? So it's just a coincidence that you ended up working for the Raleigh's, too? Yes, I'm Nancy Drew. And you are? I'm Nancy Drew. My two friends haven't arrived yet. Did you see the phantom horse last night? Bet Raleigh said something about a phantom horse when I talked to her on the phone. Do you know what she was talking about? How do I prove to you I know what I'm doing? Actually, that's a good question. Their plane was delayed. They'll be here as soon as they can. Is that important? And you are... So you're in charge of the horses? If I don't know something, can I just ask you? Once I pass your test, can I ride any time I want? Do these horses ground tie? Which horse would you like me to ride? Bob? Who's Bob? What'll stay put? A horse could be trained to do what that horse did, couldn't it? Was there anything about the horse that looked familiar to you? Right. Sorry. Well, I hope you like surprises, Tex, because you're in for one. Why do you say that? You're not suggesting he saw a ghost, are you? Are you trying to scare me? Not really. I mean, not technically. I'm just very observant, that's all. So all the bad stuff that's been going on around here. It's not because you're helping her get back at the Raleigh's for letting her go? Are you and your sister very close? Are you sure you didn't see that glowing horse that was running around here last night? Dave made it sound like it was pretty hard to miss. Why not? You don't actually think it was a ghost, do you? May I go riding now? May I go riding now? May I go riding again? May I try riding one of the other horses? Is it okay if I go riding? I put that bridle back together.
Now may I go riding? I understand you have a sister named Jane Nash. I found a pretty nasty letter from someone named Jane Nash in the Raleigh's desk. Did you know that she used to work for the Raleigh's? Has anyone tried going after that phantom horse when it appears? I found a horseshoe outside that wasn't there yesterday. I was thinking that maybe the phantom horse threw it. I'm pretty sure I saw Mary Yazzie riding on ranch property. Have you ever seen her riding around here? When I asked her about it, she denied it. Adamantly. Just wondered what she was doing. Did I see you and Mary Yazzie riding together? I did the barrel race in under ten seconds and roped the sawhorse four out of five times. Do I get a lariat? I need a rope. Do you think I could borrow yours? Do you know anything about the treasure that Dirk Valentine supposedly hid for his sweetheart? Eh, somehow I knew you were going to say that. Figures. I've been to the ghost town, but I didn't see any horse. So, you've been out to Dry Creek? What do you mean? Why not? Did something happen? Do you go out there much? When was the last time you were there? No. It just seemed like she was hiding something, that's all. Talk to you later. Bad news? Nope. Hello? Hi, Bess. It's me. I'm at the ranch. Where are you guys? Omaha. Hello? Hey, Bess. Nancy, our link to the world of excitement and intrigue and decent food. What's the latest? Hello? Hi, guys. So what Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed say? Actually, I haven't called them yet. Hello? Me again. What's the status of your plane? Nobody will tell us a thing. And now a bunch of really dark clouds are rolling in. What's going on with you, Nan? Hello? Hi, guys. So what Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed say? Get this. Hello? Where are you guys? You've got to get out here. I saw the Phantom Horse last night. Know what we saw last night? the inside of a motel room in St. Louis. Hello? It's me. So what's going on there? Hello? Nancy. Hi, it's Bess. And George. Hi, I'm at the ranch. Where are you guys? Guess. Our plane had to land here so they could fix some radio problem, and now they're saying we may be here for hours. Our plane had to land here so they could fix some radio problem, and now they're saying... It's Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, George. Now they're saying we may be here for hours. No joke, Nancy. We're in Omaha, Nebraska. We're at the airport in Omaha, Nebraska. Our plane had to land here so they could fix some problem with the radio, and now they're saying we could be on the ground for hours. Who knows what's really going on? Yeah, no one around here ever gives you a straight answer. So what's going on there? Yet. I mean, oh my gosh, you've got a mystery to solve, don't you? I can hear it in your voice. What's happened? Tell us. All I know so far is the Raleigh sent one of their ranch hands to pick me up at the airport instead of meeting my plane themselves. That is weird. Oh my gosh, are they okay? Well, actually, it bit Uncle Ed. <gasps> is he all right? He will be. Right now he's in the hospital. He'll probably be there for a day or two. Aunt Bet's staying with him. Yeah, that doesn't sound like Uncle Ed and Aunt Bet at all. Are they there at the ranch? Nope. The ranch hand who picked me up told me I could reach them at this phone number he gave me. So what'd they say? I haven't called them yet. Oh my gosh. And apparently a phantom horse showed up at just about the same time as that snake. So call them. Yeah, and as soon as you do, call us. Sounds good to me. In the meantime, call Uncle Ed and Aunt Bet. I mean, not only have you got our curiosity going, but we're bored, Nancy. Bored. I hear ya. I'll talk to you soon, okay? You better. Sounds good to me. So what else has been going on? A phantom horse? Of all the times to get stranded in some stupid airport. Look, you just better keep us posted, Nancy Drew. That's all I gotta say. We're so bored. George just bought a book on 19th century clothing and accessories. George did? It's the only thing in the bookstore here that looked halfway interesting. So if you need to know anything that's even remotely related to 19th century fashion, let us know, okay? You're there investigating phantom horses, and what are we doing? A big fat nothing. That does it, George. We're suing the airline. Bess? Phantoms don't really exist, okay? According to legend, seeing the horse is bad luck. I believe it. I mean, look at what happened to the guy who owned him. Two words, Nancy. Call them! So, you're saying someone used the horse to lure everyone outside, then put the snake in their room, knowing no one would be watching? It's possible, don't you think? But if you're right, it means someone wants to hurt Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed. Oh my gosh! If you're right, it means that someone is on the ranch. And whoever it is must be working with an accomplice. You know, someone to wrangle the horse. I saw her on a talk show once. Seemed kind of full of herself. Why do you ask? I had to call her in order to open this old trunk at Mary Yazzie's. 
She knows a lot about the people who used to live at Shadow Ranch. I bet I know more about 19th century clothing design than she does. So everyone there is a suspect. That's right. Well, you don't have to sound so happy about it. So just find a way to decode that message and you'll be all set. You're surrounded by cowboys. They don't sit around writing gibberish. And we know Uncle Ed didn't write it because even his printing is totally illegible. Aunt Bet does sometimes write this poetry stuff, but I wouldn't call it gibberish. It's just... Bad. You're surrounded by cowboys. They don't sit around writing gibberish. And we know Uncle Ed didn't write it, because even his printing is totally illegible. Aunt Bet does sometimes write this poetry stuff, but I wouldn't call it gibberish. It's just... Bad. Ooh, I love it when outlaws hide loot, don't you? What'd the letter say? Well, evidently, Dirk wanted Francis to have the loot he'd stashed, so he set up this elaborate treasure hunt for her. The letter contained all sorts of weird, obscure clues to help her find what he'd hidden. But if the letter was never opened, Francis couldn't have found the treasure. Oh my gosh, it could still be out there. And someone could be using that phantom horse to chase the Raleighs off the ranch because they want to be the ones to find it. We're stuck here when we could be there with you looking for hidden loot? That does it, George. We're suing the airline and the airport. Whoa, definitely another suspect. What's on the property? According to the Raleighs, nothing but rocks. They just don't feel like selling it to her or to anyone else. She may have an ulterior motive. And where there's an ulterior motive, there's almost always a suspect. What's on the property? I don't know. I should probably call the Raleighs and ask them. Good idea. And the sooner the better. If Frances never saw that letter from Dirk that her father intercepted, she couldn't have found the treasure, which means she couldn't have left a clue as to its whereabouts in that locket. Well, that green bottle obviously meant something to her. I think you should find it first and ask questions later. Although I'm really not sure how, if we're right and Francis never found that treasure. Well, that green bottle obviously meant something to her. I think you should find it first and ask questions later. Our plane finally took off at 7 last night. We didn't call you because we wanted to surprise you. Only the next thing we knew, we were being diverted to St. Louis on account of bad weather, so the airline put us up at a motel. But when we came back to the airport this morning, guess what? We're fogged in. I have never seen fog this thick. Visibility's three feet tops. You can barely drive in this stuff, let alone land and take off. Let's change the subject. So you saw the phantom horse? Last night, right after the campfire, this glowing horse appeared out of nowhere, then went galloping away. And right after that, the main pipe in the pump house sprang a leak. Another case of bad luck? I think not. So while everyone's attention was on the horse, someone sabotaged the pump house. First the rattlesnake, now this. Yikes. At first, he denied it. Then when he finally admitted it, he said he lied because he knew the truth makes him look bad. Yeah, it makes him look like he's been sabotaging stuff at the ranch to help his sister get back at Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed. He says that's not true, that he doesn't even blame the Raleighs for firing her. Words are cheap, Nan. Keep an eye on him. He got upset when I asked him about it. Which means you touched a nerve. Which means he could be sabotaging stuff at the ranch to help his sister get back at Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed. Better keep an eye on him, Nancy. So? So, Jane Nash wrote the Raleighs a nasty letter because they fired her back when they were in Phoenix. And if Tex is her brother... He could be sabotaging stuff at the ranch to help his sister get back at Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed. Better keep an eye on him, Nancy. Has he found any? He says no. But if he's lying... And he found gold on the Raleigh's property... He could be sabotaging stuff at the ranch to chase off Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed so he can have all the gold for himself. Better keep an eye on him, Nancy. They might help you figure out what they are. We're stuck here while you get to read love letters? Okay, George. We're suing the airline, both airports, and the weather service. It was made by the Chicago Mercantile Company back in 1881. That's one of the companies in my book. Is there anything else on it? Yeah, some kind of number. HB3941. Check that task list you keep in your notepad. Or the case notes you keep there. Maybe those will help. Take a look at the case notes you keep in your notepad. Maybe some of them will spark some ideas. You saw the phantom horse again? Was anything sabotaged? The power lines going to the ranch house were either cut or were otherwise disconnected from the house. You mean you don't have electricity? We have a generator. It's pretty noisy, but it sure beats the alternative. But listen to this. When I was exploring the ghost town, I got this powdery stuff all over my gloves. And last night, when it was dark, my gloves were glowing. Glowing? Like the horse? Exactly like the horse. 
Maybe it glows because someone rubbed some kind of phosphorescent powder all over it. And if you found that stuff in the ghost town, that must be where he or she has been hanging out. And another thing, Dave was suspiciously absent during all the excitement last night. You better be careful, Nancy. If he and whoever's out at the ghost town are working together, they may decide you're a threat. So what are you going to do? You know darn well what she's going to do. She's going to go back out to the ghost town by herself immediately, if not sooner. Well, the fog has finally lifted, and they say we will definitely get out of here today. What they won't say is when. Hello? We're booked on a flight to Phoenix. All right. The bad news is, the flight's been delayed. The plane that's supposed to fly us out of here is sitting on the tarmac in New Jersey waiting to take off. It's like 93rd in line or something. So what are you doing, Nance? Have you figured out who's behind the sabotage yet? All I have to do is go where the picture on this agate takes me and I'll be all set. The picture on this what? It's a long story. It was glowing? Is this Valentine guy a phantom too? Uh, I don't think so. Well, how come his horse got to become a phantom and he didn't? You don't buy that it was an unfortunate coincidence? She writes romance novels that take place in the Old West. That rules me out. Gibberish? You mean, like a code? That could be why someone tried to burn it, so no one else at the ranch would ever know what it said. Maybe it was about the sabotage. No way. It was locked up in this chest that belonged to her father, and the letter was never opened. According to his journal, her father intercepted it and locked it away before Francis could read it. So did you read it? Of course she did. I mean, she better have. You went horseback riding? I rode to this store that this woman named Mary Yazzie owns. She seems to have a bit of an attitude problem when it comes to the Raleigh's. Maybe the bottle's a clue to where Valentine's loot is hidden. No, and believe me, I've been meaning to ask. Well, Dave Gregory, he's the foreman, and he's very cute, Bess. Wouldn't you know it? Anyway, I caught him secretly digging around in the cellar. He knows about Dirk Valentine's treasure, too. What about the other cowboys? Love letters? I love love letters! Was there anything in them about the loot he'd stashed for her? No, but there are references to some of her favorite things. And since the letter that Dirk wrote to her from jail mentioned that her favorite flowers will help her find the treasure... Was there anything in it? No, but if it's the bag that Dirk mentioned in one of his love letters, it could hold some sort of clue. What does it look like? Well, there's a bird on it, but the beads have completely fallen off this one section. However, it does have the name of the manufacturer at the bottom. I'm tempted to ask you to wait until George and I get there, but I know that'd be like asking an Olympic speed skater to slow down. Just be prepared to tell us all about it. All right, I'll see you guys later. Then add the fuel. You know, the big stuff. But it can't be too big. You might have to split some logs to get fuel that's the right size. And don't forget to keep a bucket full of water nearby. Aunt Bet is a real stickler for safety. Count us out. We're too bored. Our brains have grown weak and flaccid from lack of stimulation. Try Frank and Joe. They're used to being bored. I think that can be arranged. What do you need? Maybe that's what beat pattern it is. There's a bunch of phone numbers in this book. Maybe we can track down the pattern for you. That'd be great. Like I said, it could be pretty important. Especially if the part that's missing turns out to have something to do with flowers. We'll get right on it. A phantom horse? Of all the times to get stranded in some stupid airport. Look, you just better keep us posted, Nancy Drew. That's all I gotta say. Three words. Tinder, kindling, and fuel. Tinder is anything that burns real easily, like really dry grass or newspaper. So put that down first. Then surround it with kindling. You know, sticks, pine cones, scrap wood. But don't just dump it on. Make a teepee out of it so air can circulate easily. Yikes. Don't ask me. I can barely tell a vegetable from a fruit. Why don't you use your cell phone and go online? Maybe you can find the information you need on the web. Just fill the hole in with those pieces of basket. The pattern on the basket will help you figure out which piece goes where. Those three holes must be some kind of lock. Maybe you need to find three square-bottomed keys. Figuring out which direction to turn each of them could be tricky, though. Take your time, Nancy. You'll figure it out. Yeah, the clock's not ticking on this one. Those three holes must be some kind of lock. Maybe you need to find three square bottom keys. Figuring out which direction to turn each of them could be tricky, though. It probably opens just like that compartment in the blanket chest did. Put those three wrench things in the square holes. But which way does she turn them, Bess? That's the hard part. Maybe that romantic hearts and doves design has something to do with it. Let's see. Who could you call that would know something about things that are old and things that are romantic? You need to find the peg that fits in that little hole. Find a locket just like it and your problem will be solved. What kind of blanket statement is that? 
Just something I had to get off my chest, that's all. Whenever you see a petroglyph, just click on the grid, and two letters that mark its place on the grid will appear below. Just make sure that where you click on the grid corresponds as closely as possible to the position of that particular petroglyph out in the desert. If you're careful, pretty soon all those letters will spell out a message. Check out the stairs leading from the pump house to the cellar. I'll bet it's under one of them. If you shift things down there around a bit, a whole new world might open up. Just move the rings around until you have all the rings of one pattern and color together. You've got to put them in order by size, too, don't forget. Seems to me you have to find out where Cappy's is, then find out where his keys are, and then find out who this Pappy person is. No problem. As long as you're psychic. Sounds to me like another phone call to a certain best-selling author is in order. The one about the forks and the beady eyes? Well, there's more than one kind of fork, you know. You got your pitchforks, your salad forks, your forks in the road, your forks in the river. You just need to take a brand new look at the situation, Nancy. That's all. Well, you've got the tuning forks. Now all you have to do is look around in the ghost town for a crank and figure out where the beady eyes ranch is. Take a brand new look at the situation, Nancy. That's all you need to do. Well, you've got the tuning forks and the crank. Now all you have to do is figure out where the beady eyes ranch is. Take a brand new look at the situation, Nancy. That's all you need to do. Stay in touch. That's an order. Thanks for calling. Bye, Nan. Have fun. Wish you were here. Kidding. Two words, Nancy. Call, call us. us. Thanks for giving us something to do. Bye. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic messaging service. I'll call back later. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic messaging service. I should be calling the Raleigh's, not Bess and George. I bet if you just go to the kitchen and chill for a while, you'll find one. All you have to do is stick to it. Well, if it's a rock, it's most likely in the desert. And if it's called zebra rock, chances are the same thing that makes zebras distinctive also makes this rock distinctive. She's looking for a rock from Africa? Not quite, Bess. Just use those pieces of chicken wire to cover the hole. Overlap some of the pieces if you have to, but make sure that hole is completely covered. Yeah, coyotes can squeeze through just about anything. Especially when a free chicken dinner is involved. Use the magnet to move each of those pieces of metal through the maze under the glass. Match each metal piece to a piece of petrified wood. You can tell which element goes to which piece of wood by the color in the wood. If you're not sure which color goes with what element, take another look through Mary Yazzie's store. Remember what Dirk said in that letter he wrote to Francis? from jail? Your favorite flowers and the flowers on your favorites? I'll bet if you enter the six flowers that Francis loved, or that were on the things that she loved, it'll open right up. Go back through all the stuff you've learned about Francis. I'll bet all her favorites are there. Hash marks translate into numbers, remember. So look at each group of hash marks and figure out what number it represents. Of course, then you have to figure out what each number represents. Which could be hard. Or it could be as easy as ABC. The first thing you have to do is find the ring the letter talks about. Problem is, Frances probably took it with her when she went east, which means it's probably long gone. But if her cousin Ellie had one just like it, maybe, just maybe, Dave inherited it from her. Might as well ask him. And if you do get the ring from him, all you have to do is find the game at Cappy's that the letter mentions and use the ring to play it. The first thing you have to do is find the ring the letter talks about. Problem is, Frances probably took it with her when she went east, which means it's probably long gone. But if her cousin Ellie had one just like it, maybe, just maybe, Dave inherited it from her. No harm in asking, and if you do get the ring from him, figure out how to use it in that game at Cappy's. My guess is you need a key. Maybe where to find it has something to do with the message Dirk said he'd leave in the jail cell. Good thought. Going back there might unlock all sorts of possibilities. My guess is you need a key. Maybe that's what he meant by the message he left in the jail cell, under bank lamp. Maybe the key is under the bank lamp. My guess is you need a key. Remember the letter you found under the bank lamp? Maybe that's what you get if you play the fun machine at Cappy's. It's at least worth a try. My guess is you need a key. You have a key, Nancy. The one you got when you played the fun machine at Cappy's. Yeah, try using it. Click on the pictures that Dirk drew in that note you found in the secret compartment of the music box. But make sure you click on them in the order he has them in the note. Apparently by doing that, you'll create another rock picture. And when you go to where that picture is, you'll find something behind it. Go back out to the desert and try to find the rock picture that you made by drawing lines between the ones Dirk gave you. Sounds like there's something behind it. It'd be nice if you could get the scuff marks off of it. Try Mary Ozzie. Maybe she has something that could help you. First, you need to find out who, or what, 
Charlie was. Then you need to find out where he's buried. Then you need to go to his grave, hold up the agate, and then hang on to your hat. Because something tells me that this is either the end of the trail, or the beginning of a whole new one. You must have to push those little buttons down in some kind of sequence. Just keep track of what buttons you've pushed, and in what order. It might take some time, but you'll figure it out. Dirk said something about having her picture painted in her favorite shawl. I'll bet that's what she's wearing in that painting in the den. Take a closer look at it, then do some web browsing on your phone. I'll bet there's something there that'll have you in stitches. Dirk said something about the picture that was on her favorite beaded purse. He may have been referring to that old purse you found in the cellar. Maybe you should ask somebody about it. Yeah, like yours truly. Dirk said something about the picture that was on her favorite beaded purse. He may have been referring to that old purse you found in the cellar. Maybe it's high time you did something with that bead pattern we sent you. Yeah, and if you need beads, maybe Mary Ozzy can help you out. Dirk said something about the picture that was on her favorite beaded purse. He may have been referring to that old purse you found in the cellar. If there was a flower somewhere in that bead pattern, you may be one step closer to opening that music box. Didn't her father say something about her favorite flower in that journal you found in the den? Yeah, what was it called? Harrison's Yellow or something? Sounds like a good subject for a web search to me. In one of his letters, Dirk said something about the cake she baked him. He said she said it was the best cake recipe in the world. And if that was the recipe you used to bake that cake for Tex, there's a good chance that that marzipan flour you decorated it with was one of her favorites. Seems to me that in one of his letters, Dirk said that there was a flower on Francis' favorite stationery. If you could just see a letter that Francis had written to somebody back then, you'd be able to see the flower he was talking about. Wait a minute. What about that letter Dave said she'd written to his great aunt? Oh my gosh! George is right! If Dave still has that letter, you may be in luck. Those crackers she used to eat with Dirk. He said in that letter that they were her favorites. He also said that Cappy used to special order them. Take a good look around what's left of that establishment of his. And if you find something but you still have questions, maybe your favorite romance novelist can help you out. Hello? Hello, Mrs. Raleigh. It's Nancy Drew. Nancy! Are you at the ranch? Yes, and I'm a little concerned that you're not. Hello? Hi, Mrs. Raleigh. It's Nancy again. Hi, Nancy. It's Nancy. I can hear, Bet. How is Mr. Raleigh doing? Hello? Hi, Aunt Bet. It's Nancy. Hi, Nancy. It's Nancy. I can hear, Bet. Hello? Hi, Aunt Bet. I forgot to ask you before how Uncle Ed was doing. Well, he definitely has some kind of infection. I'm fine. So they've got him on antibiotics. We'll be here at least two more days. Hello? Hi, Aunt Bet. Nancy, Dave called and told us what happened. Are you all right? I'm fine. Oh, everything's fine. I mean, it is now. It wasn't last night, of course. Everything would have been fine last night if you hadn't made such a fuss. How could I not make a fuss? There was a rattlesnake in our bedroom for Pete's sake. That's because I told them not to. I wanted you to hear what happened from the horse's mouth, as it were. I thought you might worry otherwise. But I am worrying. I can't help but think that something terrible's happened. I told Ed to leave it alone and let one of the hands get it out of there, but no, Ed started poking at it with my yardstick, and all of a sudden it leapt up and bit him. Yes, we are. Although I'm only here because Ed's here. He's the patient. I'm just here to keep him company. You can go home any time you want. Oh, someone's got to keep you out of trouble. Next thing I know, you'll be playing with scorpions. I wasn't playing with that snake. I was trying to shoo it out of the room. In the bedroom, dear. I could have sworn I mentioned that. No, Mrs. Raleigh. I mean, where did it bite him? On his arm? On his leg? Oh, on his arm, just below the elbow. Swelled up something awful. But fortunately, well, his arm swelled up something awful, and he was feeling pretty poorly by the time we finally got him here. I was fine. She's exaggerating. Oh, Ed, you wish. Anyway, dear, he's doing much better today, and the doctors think he'll be well enough to go home in a day or so. I'm well enough to go home right now. No, you're not. If I don't stay here with him, he'll get up and walk right out that door. No, I won't. Oh, nothing, dear. Absolutely nothing. Oh, good heavens, no. I won't hear of it. You're going to go on as if none of this ever happened. You just go get a horse from Tex. He's the head wrangler. And go riding to your heart's content. I told Shorty to go ahead with the cookout I planned for tonight and... The envelope. Have her take that envelope to Mary. Oh, good idea. There's an envelope in the roll-top desk in the den marked Mary. If you could ride over to Mary Yazzie's and give it to her, we'd really appreciate it. Because of the way the roads are set up around here, it takes longer to drive to her place from the ranch than it does to get there on horseback. Dave will tell you how to get there. She's going to have to get the key to the desk from him, too. Oh, that's right. I always lock the roll-top. Dave has the key. 
Oh, dear. It seems like there was something else I wanted to tell you. The horse, Bet. Tell her about the phantom horse. Did he say phantom horse? Yes. You see, last night we... Hello, Mr. Raleigh. Time for those tests. Phantom horse? Let's get something straight right now. Even though we're Bess and George's aunt and uncle and not yours, I want you to call us Aunt Bet and Uncle Ed, too. Got that? All right. Good. Now, what was the question? How is Mr. Ro... I mean, Uncle Ed doing? Well, he's running a slight fever, so the doctors are a little concerned. Oh, I'm fine. They're going to keep him here overnight, just to make sure he isn't developing some kind of infection. Oh, but enough about us. How are you doing? I have no idea. The parcel she wants to buy is nowhere near her store, and there's nothing but rocks on it. Maybe someone else there at the ranch knows, but we sure don't. She's been after us to sell it to her practically since the day we arrived. That was her first formal offer. I guess she thought if she put it in writing, we'd accept. Why does she want it so bad? None whatsoever. She wants to know where that phantom horse came from. I was hoping she could tell us. You're the detective, dear. If you want to snoop around and see what you can find out about that creature, by all means, please do. None at all. We heard the horse come galloping up, so we jumped out of bed and ran outside to look. When we came back, there it was, right there on the floor by the bed. Has that ever happened before? No. And if it ever happens again, I... Well, it just won't, that's all. I sold most of it to Mary Yazzie. She gets a lot of antique collectors in her store. Some things I kept, like Francis's favorite recipes. And that ridiculous blanket chest. You insisted on keeping that. Oh, yes. And I kept that triangular-shaped chest in the den. I don't think so. I mean, to me, it all looked like junk, so I got rid of it. It used to belong to Merrill Humber. He was Francis's father. And I figured since I was keeping that picture of Francis, it was only fair that I keep something of his. What kind of logic is that? Oh, hush. Oh, he's just a little bashful. He'll warm up to you. He's quite a handyman. Very trustworthy. That man scared the bejeepers out of me when he came in to interview. But he kind of grows on you. And he takes real good care of the horses. In her 30s. She was married for a while, as I recall. I have no idea. She mentioned her ex-husband once or twice, but I don't recall her saying anything about a brother. About Jane? No, why would he? Uh, I just wondered, that's all. She had an ex-husband or two, as I recall. Very unstable emotionally. Then how can you be so sure she won't do something to get back at you? For the same reason we fired her, dear. She's too lazy. And you say this happened right after that phantom horse showed up again? The pump house blew just as the horse was galloping away. Oh, my, this is awful. Maybe Shorty was right. Maybe that horse is a bad omen. What do you mean? It's possible that while everyone's attention was on that horse, someone sabotaged the pump house. Why on earth would someone sabotage the pump house? But why? That I don't know. Yet. I can't imagine who. Maybe I can find out. You don't think Tex or Shorty or Dave is somehow involved, do you? It's possible, but I just don't know yet. Oh, my. You might not be safe there. Maybe we should send her home. I'll be fine. Really, I want to help. And I can help. Well, it sounds like we could certainly use your help. No, but I'll tell you what. Ed and I will put our thinking caps on, and if anything comes to us, we'll call you. Have you called the sheriff and told him all this? Not yet. Tell her about the storms. Tell me about the what? The storms. You need to be careful when you go riding because it can be sunny one minute and pouring down rain the next. I'll be careful. Good. And if you have any more questions, just call. One more thing. Until I figure out what's going on, it would probably be a good idea not to mention my suspicions to anyone at the ranch. Of course. Keep in touch. I will. Bye. Part of her problem was that she was all talk and no show. It was Ed's idea to hire her. She was a good salesperson. She was just not a very good person person. This is the first I've heard about it. It could be why someone is trying to chase you off the ranch. Dirk Valentine. Sounds like a character from a Charlena Purcell novel. Never. And I'd remember a name like that. Dirk Valentine. Sounds like a character from a Charlena Purcell novel. Charlena Purcell? Of course I'm a fan. Who isn't? I'm not. Oh, Ed, be quiet. Why do you ask? Because I just talked to her. Really? About what? About Shadow Ranch, actually. And about Dirk Valentine. She's done quite a bit of research on him. He was in love with Francis Humber, you know.
Oh my gosh. You mean Starlina Purcell is going to write a book that takes place on our ranch? She's still my palpitating heart. Ed, you tell her she's welcome to visit Shadow Ranch and do all the research she wants anytime she wants. Don't I get some say in this? No. Shorty called too. He was practically beside himself. Thank goodness you have that generator. Tell her, Bet. I was just going to, Ed. Nancy, dear, things at the ranch seem to be going from bad to worse, and Ed and I just don't think it's safe for you to be there anymore. No, I'm fine, really. We're sending you home this afternoon. No, Aunt Bet, really. I'm not in any danger here. But Shorty said... You know how Shorty is. He worries too much. And I'm this close to finding out who's responsible for the sabotage. Just let me stay one more day, all right? All right. One more day. Thank you, Aunt Bet. How's Uncle Ed? He's still running a fever. But of course, were you to ask him how he is? I'm fine. Promise me you'll be careful, Nancy. I'll be careful, I promise. Then we'll see you soon. Uh-oh, we have to go. Don't worry about us, dear. You just go have fun. Just be sure to wear a hat and drink plenty of water. It's gonna be another hot one. Bye! No, wait, just tell me about the- I'm sure you are, dear. But since you obviously don't appreciate the fact that the welfare of animals comes first on a working ranch, I'm afraid that you, like those poor chickens, are history. Oh, I'm sorry to disappoint her, but if we sell that property to her, it would send a signal to other would-be buyers that we're interested in selling the ranch off bit by bit, and we're not. As far as I know, it was the strangest thing. Shorty kept babbling about how it was the ghost of the horse that belonged to some outlaw. Dirk Valentine? But that was right after Ed got himself bit, and we were all running around trying to get him into the truck to take him to the hospital, and I really wasn't paying much attention. As far as I know, it was the strangest thing. Shorty kept babbling about how it was the curse of this phantom horse that belonged to some outlaw. The curse of a phantom horse? But that was after Ed got himself bit, and we were all running around trying to get him into the truck to take him to the hospital, and I really wasn't paying much attention. I just thought it would give the den some character, that's all. I found it in the tack room under a pile of junk. So the former owners left behind a lot of stuff? I swear, it's like no one who lived at Shadow Ranch ever bothered to take their things with them when they left. When we moved in, the place was literally full of junk. That's too bad. Why not? Their plane had to land in Omaha because of mechanical problems. They don't know when they'll be taking off. So, you'll have all those cowboys to yourself for a while. That Dave is pretty cute. Oh, yes. She worked for us back in Phoenix, and we still own the clothing store. Unfortunately, she turned out to be totally unreliable, and we had to let her go. Her letter sounded almost threatening. Oh, she's harmless. No. Oh, my, you really are quite the detective. How did you discover that? Well, actually, it's a long story. What do you know about Dirk Valentine? Never heard of him. Do you know a Dirk Valentine? Isn't he that outlaw guy Shorty was carrying on about the night I got bit? No. Are you sure, Aunt Bet? It's kind of important. I'd remember if I sent Dave on an errand last night, Nancy, and I don't, so I didn't. I sent him on an errand. To do what? You don't want to know. Yes, I do. You don't want to know, Bet. Yes, I do, Ed. Aunt Bet. As a matter of fact, my birthday's in two days. So, you think maybe he sent Dave out to get you a present? He better have. Goodbye, Goodbye Nancy. Nancy. Didn't Tex tell you that you should never go riding without a hat? Yes, he did, but... And didn't he tell you that you should use my hat? Yes, he did that, too, but... He did that so you wouldn't get sunstroke and so you wouldn't get a head injury if you fell off. You know that, don't you, dear? Yes, ma'am. If you get hurt while you're at Shadow Ranch, I'll feel just terrible. Of course, so will you, but my point is, if you're going to disregard your own safety, then perhaps Shadow Ranch isn't the place for you. Right, Ed? Nice knowing you, Nancy. I told Tex to make sure you knew you should always check your cinch before you went on a trail ride. Actually, he did that. Then what happened? I just didn't do it. So it wasn't Tex's fault, it was yours? Yes, ma'am. I see. Well, we simply cannot have people riding around sideways because they were too lazy to make sure their saddles were on securely. That's all there is to it. Don't you think, Ed? Three words, Nancy. Hasta la vista. Didn't Tex tell you that feeding the horses wrong could be fatal? Yes, he did. Tex said that poor horse you fed is colicking. I know. I was just careless. I commend your honesty, dear. But I'm afraid we can't afford to have careless people on the ranch. And since Tex would be quite happy to strangle you right now, what we're going to say next is actually for your own good.
I don't understand, dear. Didn't Shorty tell you to only pick things that were ripe? Yes. But he says that you went out and picked vegetables that weren't ripe. Yes, I'm afraid I did. Oh, dear. That garden is an important source of food for us. We simply can't have someone picking things willy-nilly and wasting perfectly good vegetables. Can we, Ed? We could wind up with scurvy. You're just not responsible enough for ranch life yet, dear. So why don't you go back to River Heights, and just as soon as you've developed the proper respect for produce, we'll invite you back. All right? Didn't Dave tell you what would happen if you didn't fix that fence like he asked? Yes, and I was going to do it, really. Then why didn't you? Well, I... I just didn't get around to it. We were raising those chickens so we could eat the eggs, dear, not so the coyotes could eat the chickens. Every morning, Ed has an egg white omelet. At least I used to. I'm really sorry. I know that chicken, dear. She only becomes aggressive when she's provoked. Were you provoking her? I was just kind of playing with her. Playing with or teasing? I guess it was more like teasing. We can't have people taunting the chickens, dear. It makes them less productive and just plain mean. And if you have to be told not to pick on some poor, defenseless, well, relatively defenseless creature, I'm afraid you're not the type of person that's welcome at Shadow Ranch. Your hen hassling days are over, Nancy. Bye. You accidentally set the oven on fire? I was baking a cake, and I guess I left it in too long. Does the oven still work? No, it's ruined. There's some smoke damage, too. And by some, you mean... I mean, the walls and the ceiling are pretty much black now. Maybe you should let me talk to Shorty. Actually, when he saw what I'd done, he tore off his apron and went stomping out the door. I could be wrong, but he may have said something about <laughs> quitting. So what you're saying is, you destroyed my oven, severely damaged my kitchen, and caused my cook to quit? Uh, yeah. Sounds like three strikes to me. I'm afraid I have to agree. So as they say in baseball, Nancy, you're out. I never found feeding the chickens to be all that difficult, dear. Is the heat getting to you? I just wasn't being careful. Dave says the chickens have stopped laying and just plain look sick. I know. It's all my fault, Aunt Bet. I can't tell you how disappointed Dave is. He thought you were really coming along. Why, he was all set to talk to Shorty and Tex about thinking up a ranch-type nickname for you. Really? Want to hear the nickname I got for you? No, I don't think I do. She may be ill-tempered, but she's one of our best egg producers, dear. Didn't you see what I wrote by her nest? Well, yes. Then why did you try to get her egg when she was sitting on it? Because I thought I could. I happen to like that chicken. I know you do, Ed. Birds of a feather. So, not only have you traumatized one of our best hens, but it appears that you can't be trusted to read and obey simple written instructions. It won't happen again, Aunt Bet. Well, Nancy, you're right about that. All right, dear. Bye now. Say goodbye to Nancy. Goodbye to Nancy. We'll be right here. Bye. Call us any time. I don't understand, dear. Didn't Shorty tell you to only pick things that were ripe? Yes. But he says you not only picked ripe things... You picked everything. Yes, I guess I did. Oh, dear. That garden is an important source of food for us. We simply can't have someone picking things willy-nilly and wasting perfectly good vegetables. Can we, Ed? We could wind up with scurvy. You're just not responsible enough for ranch life yet, dear. So why don't you go back to River Heights, and just as soon as you've developed the proper respect for produce, we'll invite you back. All right? You tied the cinch strap to the wrong place? Yes, I'm afraid I did. I don't understand, dear. So what else is new? Ed, you assured me when I invited you out here that you knew how to saddle a horse. I know. I just wasn't thinking straight. It must have been the heat, you know, because I wasn't wearing a hat. You weren't wearing a hat. Ouch. You see, Nancy... This is Charlena. Who is this again? Uh, Nancy Drew? Tell me about the trunk you found. Well... That does sound like it came from the Humber family. Is there any kind of picture on it? Yes, as a matter of fact, there's this kind of abstract design made up of hearts and doves and the initials E-H and A-H. Describe the image. It's this kind of abstract design made up of hearts and doves and the initials E-H and A-H. E-H would be Eldridge Humber and A-H would be Abigail Humber. Frances Humber's grandparents on her father's side. Her mother died when she was ten. Now, the picture, no doubt, commemorates their wedding day, which was 4-9-11, April 9th, 1811.
You got me. In the course of my research, I've only read about the trunks Merrill and Eldridge Humber handcrafted. I've never actually opened one. However, I'm afraid I wouldn't know. In the course of my research, I've only read about the trunks Merrill and Eldridge Humber handcrafted. I've never actually opened one. However, I've been running across fascinating tidbits concerning the Humber family and stashing them away for years. When I have enough tidbits stashed away, I may well write a book about them. Then you'd probably be very interested to know what's in this trunk. Yes, I would. And since I've helped you, or tried to, it's only fair that you help me, don't you think? Sure, I'll keep you posted. Did I mention that I'm staying at Shadow Ranch? This just gets better and better. I'll tell my assistant to put your calls through immediately. By the way, why are you so interested in the Humbers? Knowing more about them and what happened in the past may help me figure out something that's going on in the present. I'm kind of a detective. That makes two of us. I'll be waiting to hear from you. Hello, Nancy. So what have you discovered? Hello, Nancy. What's the latest? Sorry, I know a lot about the Humbers, but I don't know everything. What happened to all of Dirk Valentine's ill-gotten gains? That's what I'd really like to know. I know a lot about the Humbers, but I don't know anything about a green bottle. What happened to all of Dirk Valentine's ill-gotten gains? That's what I'd really like to know. The rumor is Dirk hid his fortune in such a way that only Francis would be able to find it. And seeing that he was basically just a high-spirited, fun-loving guy who loved taking risks, I tend to believe it. But the fact that after Dirk's demise, she spent the rest of her life teaching school in Ohio strongly suggests that she never found the treasure. So the rumor probably isn't true. If you're talking about the rumor that Dirk hid his fortune in such a way that only Francis would be able to find it, I know all about it. The thing is, after Dirk's demise, Francis spent the rest of her life teaching school in Ohio, which strongly suggests that she never found the treasure. So the rumor probably isn't true. Really? Tell me. I found a letter from Dirk that Francis never read. It told her how to start looking for what he'd hidden for her. His clues were rather obtuse, though. For example? For example, he refers to her favorite flowers and the flowers on her favorites. Do you know what that means? No, and that's the problem. Whatever clues he left for her no doubt relate to things only she and no one else would understand. That's the spirit. And if you think there's something I can help you with, please do not hesitate to call. Hopeless. There's no such word. Where there's a will... And a potential bestseller, there's a way. That's pretty much my philosophy, too. Except for the bestseller part. Keep up the good work. And if you think there's something I can help you with, please do not hesitate to call. Frances, being as smart as she was, taught herself how to play it. That's apparently how she met Dirk. He heard her composing a song one day and fell in love on the spot. I realize that my novels aren't everyone's cup of tea. But it wouldn't hurt to at least give them a try, would it? No. In fact, I'll pick one up first chance I get. And I'll send you the name of those crackers first chance I get. I'll take that as a no. But don't worry about it. Of course I will. I'm sure it was sometimes used for gambling, but I'm talking about mechanical games. Believe it or not, they had some very primitive arcade-type games back in the 1880s. Some were quite entertaining, especially for a cent and a half. And I tend to believe it, seeing that Dirk was basically just a high-spirited, fun-loving guy who loved to take risks. E.H. would be Eldridge Humber, and A.H. would be Abigail Humber, Francis Humber's grandparents. The picture no doubt commemorates their wedding day, which was April 9th, 1811. And was anything in the locket watch? Half a picture. I'm pretty sure what's there is a picture of Francis. And on the back it said, Green Bottle Under. Hmm, wonder what that means. And was anything in the locket watch? Half a picture. I'm pretty sure what's there is a picture of Frances. I think the missing half was of her father. Anyway, on the back it said, Green Bottle Under. Hmm, wonder what that means. Dry Creek, closest town to Shadow Mountain. Population at its peak, 317. Leading citizen was Cappy Munger. His establishment contained the only piano within 50 miles, probably his father, Kashmir Valentine. He was a blacksmith over in Prescott. Would Francis have known who he was? Oh, yes. Dirk worshipped his father. Which is ironic, because by the time Dirk was arrested, his father had pretty much disowned him out of shame. Not offhand, but I certainly can't find out. 
Details like that are why so many of my books have won awards for historical accuracy. Have you read any of my books? Sounds like you have a piece of Dry Creek script. It was sometimes used in mining towns like Dry Creek in place of currency. Does it have a denomination on it? It says one and a half cents. Probably used for games. You do that. Look forward to it. I'll be waiting. That would be great. Well, I'm looking for Dirk Valentine's treasure. Yes, ma'am. See, my great aunt Ellie was Francis Humber's cousin. When she died, she left me a bunch of stuff, including an old letter she'd gotten from Francis a couple of years. In the letter, Francis said that Valentine had hidden a bunch of loot somewhere and wanted Francis to find it by following the clues he left for her. I also found this picture. I was hoping that the treasure might be under the stairs in here, but no such luck. As far as I know, no one does. The entrance is secret, about a week. Mostly late at night or whenever I could sneak away. I come and go through a secret entrance. These stairs lead to a secret door behind the bookcase in the den. The Raleigh's don't know. I was afraid that if I told them, they'd... I know, and I'll tell them, I swear, soon as they come back. They got enough on their minds right now. I don't know anything about that horse or any of the other stuff that's been going on around here, I swear. Now, if you'll pardon me, I need to tend to my chores. Francis was real smart, see? Loved puzzles. Played the piano pretty good, too. Anyway... After Valentine met his end, Frances was too broken-hearted to care about some treasure. She told Aunt Ellie that if she could find it, she could keep it. See, my brother's dead broke. No job, health's bad. I was thinking if I could just find the treasure... You call the Raleigh's yet? You talk to the Raleigh's? Hello, Nancy. Something I can do for you? Hello, Nancy. Guess I'm gonna be blushing every time I see you now. Hello, Nancy. Thanks for fixing that fence. What can I do for you? No offense, ma'am, but this here's a working cattle ranch. Somebody tells you to do something, it'd be a good idea to get in the habit of doing it. Now, if you'll excuse me. Sorry, ma'am. In that case, I can't talk to you. He'll be okay. Getting bit by a rattler's no picnic, but it sounds like he's out of the woods. Actually, I'm kind of glad you came by. Something I need you to do for me, if you wouldn't mind. This glowing horse came galloping up out of the dark, making a real ruckus. Everybody woke up and went running outside to look. It was the strangest thing I've ever seen. Positive. Probably crawled in through a mouse hole sometime during the day and took a nap. Nighttime's when they're most active. Something the Raleigh's found out the hard way. Guess you're gonna be asking me a lot of questions, huh? The Raleigh's said you were a detective. I'm gonna be honest with you, ma'am. We were short a couple hands to begin with, and now with the Raleigh's gone and everybody on edge over what happened last night, well, this is not a good time to be visiting Shadow Ranch, that's all. Guess it's possible. Person would have to know how to handle snakes, of course, but then if you work in the desert, that's one of the things that's good to know. He does his job and he does it good. Far as I'm concerned, that's all that's important. No, ma'am. And it'd suit me just fine if I never saw it again. If it was, somebody out there's got a pretty twisted sense of humor because I sure didn't think it was funny. It reared up a couple times, then spun around and went racing off the way it came. By the time anybody thought about going after it, it had disappeared. To get to Mary's shop, just follow the trail that goes northeast out of the corral. Can't miss it. Not since I've been here. This got something to do with the treasure? She doesn't like the Raleigh's. No idea. Not really any of my business. It's just the feeling I get when I talk to her, that's all. Well, if the guy did hide something, it's probably long gone by now. Got it right here. When I heard you were a detective, I started keeping it on me. Thought you might snoop through my stuff or something. Stranger things have happened, I guess. And the human heart never does seem to play by the rules. Can't see why the Raleigh's would care. Less, of course, they dislike her as much as she seems to dislike them. And even then, I can't see where it'd be any of their business. <clears throat> Uh, never mind. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked. Forget I said anything. So what else can I do for you? On your way to Mary Yazzie's, look for the trail on your left that heads towards Shadow Mountain and stay on it till you get there. It's about an hour and a half's ride. Well, let me know if you need anything else. So if you could keep an eye out for that chicken wire and patch that hole as soon as it gets here, the chickens and I'd really appreciate it. Doesn't look that way. But you still have to put it up, even if it means working at night. It's just common sense. You'll manage. Just be sure to wear gloves. I'll leave my pliers out. If you have to do it at night, that's okay. There should be plenty of moonlight. You'll be able to see fine. About as long as the Raleigh's have lived here. About three months, I guess. I was their first hire. First me, then Tex, then Shorty. Sure do. They gave me their key ring at the hospital. I know there's a painting of her over in the ranch house, and that's about it. Why? 
What'd the letter say? Sure. Can't say as I have, but then most of my duties require me to stay close to home. Tex, he's the one you ought to ask. Tex? And Mary Yazzie? You gotta be kidding me. Probably the one over in Dry Creek. It's a ghost town now. But the jailhouse and a couple other old buildings are still standing. At least they were last I saw. Sorry to hear that. Well, to be honest, I'm not, really. Driving back and forth to the airport takes a lot of time, and time's one thing we're all running kind of short of around here. Sure did. It was her most prized possession. In fact, I got it right here. Borrow it? What for? Just take care of it, okay? That's terrible. Did you see who did it? You shouldn't go there anymore, Nancy. Something bad's obviously going on, and you should just stay away. And call the sheriff, of course. Just make sure it gets done, because if it doesn't, the coyotes are going to have themselves one heck of a banquet, and you're going to be in a lot of hot water. Now, is there something I can do for you? You got a steady back home? This chicken coop's been a thorn in my side ever since I got here. And I should probably warn you, the wire I need to fix the hole in the fence was supposed to be delivered today. But it's not here yet, and the Raleigh's just called and asked me to run an errand for them tonight. Ma'am, take care. Appreciate it. See you later. That's Francis's father, Sheriff Merrill Humber. There's something written on the back. Stairs to cellar. That's Francis's handwriting. Looks like the other half of the message got torn off. Seems to me Aunt Ellie said Francis had one just like it. I keep it on me for good luck. I know this is a lot to ask, but do you think I could borrow it for a while? Where did you come from? Well, see, I just... I mean... I think I'll turn in too. Night, ma'am. Next time, just stick to burgers. <laughs> As usual, things did not work out like I planned. Just when I get everything fixed just right for you to go looking for the thing I hid for you, I go and get myself arrested. But no matter what you hear, nothing is going to happen to me. I will be fine and we will be together soon, I promise. Meanwhile, you can keep busy by looking for what I hid. Start by using this piece of paper to mark where all the rock pictures are. They will tell you what to do next. Your favorite flowers and the flowers on your favorites, start keeping them in mind too. I will leave a message for you in this here cell, just in case they decide to move me to the jail down in Tumbleweed or something. I like vexing your brain, because when you are thinking real hard, like when you're playing the piano, you are more beautiful than anything in the world. I am sure to be out of here before you find my treasure, but in case I am not, know that it is all yours, and that you are more precious to me than 10,000 treasures put together. 9, 12, 15, 22, 5, 25, 15, 21. Dirk. P.S. I do not and never will hold what your father did to me against you. I am glad that you are getting your picture painted wearing your favorite shawl. It will be a beautiful painting because you look beautiful in that shawl. I forget the name of the stitch you used to make it, but I think it is amazing that you learned how to knit a whole shawl just by reading one book. I wish I could put my mind to things like you can. I am also glad that you like the handbag that I got you. I knew it would become your favorite on account of the pretty picture the beads make. I want to know all the things that you like so that I can make sure you always have them. I figure that way you will always want me around. Meet me on Friday at noon by the Big Picture Rock. I love you, Dirk. Remember when we were in Cappy's eating the crackers he orders special from California and you said that from then on the crackers would be your favorite because they would always remind you of me? Well, I met a trader yesterday who had a whole wagon full of them and I bought you four tins. I also bought a rock from him because this rock has been polished to show a picture that looks just like the landscape by one of our meeting places. He called it an agate and said that the picture was made by nature, but it looks so real I can hardly believe it. I am thinking of a way to surprise you with it because it is as special as you are. 
I will meet you Tuesday at 3 by the Three Arm Cactus. Your father has people watching for me all over the county. I guess you got some of your smartness from him. I love you, Dirk. I still don't know how you got a whole cake out to our last meeting place like you did, but it was the best thing I ever ate. And the prettiest, too, what with that fancy flower you put on it. Now I think it is the best cake recipe in the world, too. But nothing is as good as getting a letter from you. Whenever I see a flower like the one on your favorite letter paper, I think of you. I only steal from people who have plenty of money to begin with and deserve to be robbed, but if I could start over, I would forget about them and be a rancher or a farmer or miner or shopkeeper or whatever you wanted me to be, just so we could always be together. Be at Charlie's grave at sunset this Thursday. I love you. Dirk. Take your forks and a crank to the BDI's ranch and make sure you see what's below. When you stick the forks in and give it a spin, off toward my treasure you'll go. Now go and peek beneath Zebra Rock, but you'll need a magnet what's there to unlock. Now go and peek beneath Zebra Rock, and a tractor of metal what's there will unlock. If you hope this task to ever complete, you must wind her up so she'll move her feet. To hide a message, take the last two letters of a word, reverse them, and then add them to the start of the word. Use these pictures in place of the word. Anyone talks about this, they get a load of buckshot. Dirk. Did you know you can play some games more than one way? You can, and I'll tell you how. Use the ring that's the twin of Ellie's your cousin in Cappy's Fun Machine Now. On the paper you got when you first began, draw lines between the pictures shown here. If you draw them in order, you'll find something you need behind the picture that you make appear. At Charlie's grave, hold this up, look around, and you'll see the trail to a gift to you from me. Dearest Cousin Ellie, my beloved Dirk is no more. I shall never see him again. And now you will never see me again, for I am on my way east, there to spend the rest of my life. I will never return to the territory of Arizona, not even when my father, whom I despise with every part of my being, has left this earth. But know this, sweet Ellie. Dirk told me that he had hidden something of great value, and that when all was in place, he would start me in pursuit of it. He was forever inventing fanciful ways to tax my brain, and was quite clever himself. Then, thanks to my father, he was arrested. Perhaps he wrote me from jail, and his note was lost. Or perhaps he grew to hate me. But he never told me how to find what he had hidden, and I am too heartsick to care. If you can somehow find it, it's yours, my dear young cousin. Know, too, that I miss you terribly and always, always will. Francis. P.S. Enclosed is a picture of the vilest man ever born. What is it this time? Uh, excuse me? Nancy! Hi! Sorry, I thought you were somebody else. Hardy Res. Hi, Joe. It's Nancy. Have you called the Raleigh's yet? Because if you haven't... Oops. Now what? Hi, Frank. Nancy! What a relief. Hardy residents. Hi, Joe. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Nancy. Hi, Frank. I thought you were this guy we're doing some work for. You guys are on a case? <laughs> That's great! No, it's not. Turns out the guy is a bit neurotic. He wants us to track down his missing laptop. He left it in a restaurant. Only he keeps calling us. Yeah, like every two minutes. He's become a real nuisance. Maybe you should just quit. Can't. The guy's filthy rich, and if we find that laptop, he said he'd make us filthy rich. But the real reason we can't quit is he's the son of our mother's best friend. Yeah, if we quit, we'd never hear the end of it. Uh-oh, we've got another call. Let him leave a message for the nine millionth time. So, Nancy, tell us about the ranch. Now look, Nancy, Frank and I are witty and charming and interesting and great fun to talk to and all that. But are you nuts? You've got a mystery on your hands. Call them. Right. He calls every 3.25 minutes. You can set your watch by him. But the good news is, to be honest, it's a little of both. He's being so obnoxious that we're working faster than we've ever worked before. We're going to solve this case in record time. Like they say, every cloud has a silver lining. Uh-oh. Incoming call. Think it's him? 3.25 minutes. It's him. Want me to hang up? No. no. He can leave a message. So what's going on there? Phantom horse? That's what Mrs. Raleigh said. She hung up before she could explain. Well, when she explains it to you, be sure to explain it to us. We get nut jobs who can't keep track of their computers. And what does Nancy get? Horses that glow in the dark. I mean, I know life isn't fair, but this is ridiculous. Sounds to me like someone was using that phantom horse to divert attention. Just what I was thinking. Someone put that snake in the Raleigh's bedroom, knowing no one would see them because all eyes were on the horse. Glowing horses? Rattlesnakes? Somebody sure went to a lot of trouble. 
which can only mean one thing. Something big's at stake here. How many people know about this treasure? That's hard to say. I mean, if I'm right, the person responsible for all the weirdness around here is probably not going to admit that he or she knows anything about it. Like you said before, person or persons. For all you know, everybody there but the Raleigh's could be in on it. Trust no one. What'd they hang him for? Robbery. Banks, stagecoaches, trains carrying payroll mostly. He kill anyone? Doesn't sound like it. That doesn't mean he never hurt anyone. Are you saying Valentine deserved what happened to him? I'm just saying he may not have seriously hurt any rich people, but the poor people working for those rich people, he probably hurt them a lot. He's been checking out mineral deposits in the area, hoping to discover a new vein or rediscover an old vein and strike it rich. Has he found anything promising? He says no. But if he's lying, that could be why he wants the Raleigh's out of there so he can have whatever's there all to himself. He has a sister whom I'm pretty sure the Raleigh's fired back when they still lived in Phoenix. She was apparently quite upset about it. And you think he might be helping her get back at them by running them off the ranch? It's possible. Sounds like a suspect to me. She wants to buy some property from the Raleigh's. Why, I don't know, but she seemed very angry when they turned her down. So maybe she figures if she can't get the Raleigh's to sell it to her, she'll just get rid of them and help herself. Sounds to me like you'd better find out why she wants that property. He not only knows about Dirk Valentine's treasure, but he's been actively looking for it. Does he know you know he knows? Yep. Then if he's the one who's been using that phantom horse to chase the Raleigh's off, it's likely he'll stop. Unless, of course, he knows that's what you're thinking, and doesn't stop precisely because he knows you know he knows what you know. Right. Maybe it was a backpacker or a prospector or something. You know, someone just passing through. But why would they hide? Why didn't they show themselves? Maybe they hadn't bathed in a long time. Or maybe they were... <gasps> ghosts. As usual, Joe, you're a big help. Bank robbers? From Denver? That's the first time I've said that out loud. It does sound kind of nuts, doesn't it? You saw what you saw? How hot did you say it was down there? I don't know. Somewhere in the 90s, I guess. Maybe in the hundreds. So there you were, traipsing around a ghost town in 100 degree heat. I really don't think she was hallucinating, Joe. It was just a thought. The best. I mean, if you're a detective. And if you've got a hard head, which you obviously do. But in a good way. Speaking of hard heads... You're obviously getting close. Just hang in there. Ever thought about wearing a helmet? Believe it or not, there's a helmet built into the cowboy hat I borrowed from Bet Raleigh. And somebody still managed to knock you out? I think they whipped it off my head just before they clobbered me, but I really don't remember. Sounds like whoever it was was very determined. You are making somebody sweat. I'm impressed. Well, if you come across a horse with something stuck in one of its shoes, you could very well have your man. I mean, horse. So what's she supposed to do? Pick up the feet of every horse she runs into out there and inspect their shoes? You never know. It could be one of the horses right there on the ranch. Right, Nancy? I mean, you wouldn't see it glowing in the daytime, and it would be pretty clever of someone to hide it in plain sight like that. Uh-uh. Too risky. I think somebody keeps that phantom horse all by itself somewhere far, far away. Trying to hide it in plain sight like that would just be too risky. I agree. I think somebody keeps that phantom horse all by itself somewhere far, far away. Missing? What do you mean? I mean, they're not here, and no one will tell me where they are. I have their phone number. I'm supposed to call them. So why haven't you called them? Whoa! Uh, how bad off is he? He's still in the hospital, but they think he's going to be okay. They've got rattlesnakes around there, huh? Whoa! Uh, how bad off is he? He's still in the hospital, but they think he's going to be okay. And that's not all that happened last night. We're listening. Apparently, this glowing horse came running up to the ranch house, caused everybody to go rushing out to look, then went racing off into the night. Let's hear it. Well, I have reason to believe that an outlaw named Dirk Valentine hid something very valuable around here for his girlfriend, Frances Humber, back in the 1880s. And you think it's still there? After more than a hundred years? Bet that put a strain on the old father-daughter relationship. The day after Valentine was hanged, Frances moved out. Her father never saw or heard from her again. Just how bad was this Valentine guy? Too many is better than none at all. Who's your most likely suspect? No way. Have you been there? Yep, and even though I went by myself, I'm pretty sure I wasn't alone. What do you mean? What makes you say that? The goose egg on my head for one thing. Somebody knocked me out, then tried to make me a permanent inmate at the jail. Congratulations! You're making somebody nervous. Means you're on the right track. What was so strange about it? It was a horseshoe print, really, and some of it was missing, some of the middle part. Maybe something's stuck in it. That's what I was thinking, although I'm not sure where that gets me. Three words. Tinder, kindling, and fuel. 
In that order. Tinder is anything that burns real easily. Kindling is small type wood. And fuel is big type wood. But it can't be too big. To build this fire, you might have to split. And to make sure no one winds up kicking the bucket, don't forget to fill one. Don't look at me. My thumb's not exactly green. If I were you, I'd get on the phone and hit the web. Just follow the pattern and you can't go wrong. Well, those three holes suggest you're going to need three square bottom keys. Find them, stick them in. Then look to Father Time for direction. The key to this is probably pretty square. Which way do you turn the key? That's the question. Just do what you did to open that blanket chest. The trick is knowing how far and in what direction to turn each key. I'll bet that hearts and doves and initial stuff that's carved in the trunk is the real key. You've got a trunk that probably dates back to the Old West, and a carving that suggests romance. Sometimes the only way to book some answers is to call an expert. Lockets that look alike often open alike, if you'll pardon the blanket statement. Bet you're glad to get that off your chest. Just look for petroglyphs, and when you see one, mark its position on the grid. Eventually, a message will appear, if you're careful. Head from the pump house to the cellar, take it step by step, then do a little light lifting. You might also have to do a little rearranging, but pretty soon, you'll get a whole new view of things. Just put them in order by pattern and color. Size counts too, don't forget. It's a sure bet that whoever wrote that message never wrote a bestseller. But someone who has written a bestseller just may have a message for you. There's all different kinds of forks, you know. Even different kinds of beady eyes. Yeah, some are even brand new. I'd sure be cranky if I had to live in that ghost town, that's all I gotta say. But if you looked at things through beady eyes, you might see things in a brand new light. Let's see. If I were the beady eyes ranch, where would I be? Maybe it would help if you tried looking at things in a brand new way. Two words. Large appliance. This is one case where hang-ups are a good thing. Chances are, the thing that makes zebras distinctive is the thing that makes this rock distinctive. Just keep putting pieces of fence over that hole until it's covered. Overlap them if you have to. But make sure that hole is completely covered. Give a coyote an inch and it'll take a mile and have itself a nice chicken dinner. I sense that you're petrified of this one, Nancy. Don't be. Just use the magnet to get those pieces of metal to the correct piece of wood. The element of color is also important here. It could be that another trip to Mary Yazzie's store is in order. Seems to me a certain outlaw once told a certain young woman that she should keep in mind her favorite flowers. And the flowers on her favorites. Sounds like good advice to me. Hash marks are just another way of writing numbers, remember? And numbers can be another way of writing letters. This one's easy as ABC, Nancy. Trust me. Seeing as Frances and her ring are long gone, your only hope now is to find her ring's twin. And there's only one person around there who could possibly have it. And if you get lucky and find it, then your next step is to go to Cappy's and have fun. Seeing as Frances and her ring are long gone, your only hope now is to find her ring's twin. And there's only one person around there who could possibly have it. And, if you get lucky and find it, head to Cappy's and round yourself up a posse. A key would help. Looking for that message Dirk said he'd leave in the jail cell in Dry Creek might help, too. My guess is the key you need to wind it up is what's under the bank lamp. Maybe getting the key you need to wind it up has something to do with playing that fun machine at Cappy's. I'll bet the key you got at Cappy's will get her moving. If you get out the map and move from one petroglyph to another in the order Dirk specified, apparently the lines between them will form a new rock picture. Sounds like he hid something behind it. Behind the one in the desert, not the one on your map. Head out to the desert, find the rock picture you drew, and discover what lies behind. First thing I'd do is try to buff it up. Well, you don't have to sound so merry about it. Go stand on Charlie's grave. He won't mind. After all, people used to sit on him all the time. Then just compare what you see from there with what you see on the agate. Then be ready for anything, because something tells me you're getting close, Nancy. Real close. It's all in knowing which button to push when. It may take some trial and error, but once you figure out the order, you'll have it made. Or should I say, opened. I could try painting you a picture, but I don't think I shall. I'll bet if you do some browsing, you'll be in stitches in no time. What about that old purse you found in the cellar? Maybe the stranded cousins would know something about it. Remember that purse you found in the cellar? There might be a flower in that bead pattern that Bess and George sent you. Sounds like a little reconstruction may be in order. And another trip to Mary Yazzie's. If that purse you found in the cellar is the one Dirk referred to in his letter, it was one of her favorites. And if there's a flower on it somewhere... Bingo. I could have sworn that her father mentioned her favorite flower in his journal. Knowing the name of it might not be enough. That's where the web comes in handy. Sounds good. Bye. Adios. Happy trails. See ya, partner. Ride em, cowgirl. Stay safe. Watch out for varmints. In Francis's world, there's one flower that takes the cake, Nancy. Don't you mean tops the cake? Yeah, I guess I do.
Remaining stationary won't help you here. So get out there and follow whatever your favorite foreman says to the letter. Head to Cappy's and look for a tin. It doesn't sound very romantic, but it may be just what the author ordered. SWGS, this is Geza. Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. Not too long ago, you provided this person I know with a map that showed the locations of mineral deposits in central Arizona? That's what I'm here for. This is Geza with the Southwest Geological Survey. I have stepped away from my desk. Due to budget constraints, I am unable to return your call, so please call back. Depends on which map it was. The number on it was PUB893A. I might. We got a lot of maps on Arizona mineral deposits, though. Know which one it was? The number on it was PUB893A. Publication 893 Alpha. Let me get it on my screen here. Yeah, that's a map somebody'd use if they wanted to go prospecting in their spare time. What's this person's name? Uh, Shorty Thurmond? Shorty Thurmond. Yeah, there he is. Publication 893 Alpha. Let me put it up on my screen here. Last person I mailed a copy to was Shorty Thurmond. That's your friend? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is. According to my notes, he just started a job in the Shadow Mountain area and figured he'd go looking for gold on his off hours. You keep notes on all the calls you get? In a bureaucracy like this one, you never know. When something goes south and fingers start pointing, it's always good to have your side of the story all nice and documented. Oh, he might find a nugget or two, but from the looks of the maps I sent him, any ore out there would be of such low quality that attempting to extract gold from it would be pointless. That's interesting. What is? Apparently, this shorty person asked me if I knew anything about Dirk Valentine's treasure. Really? Do you remember what he said? As I recall, he'd heard a rumor that some outlaw had buried some kind of treasure near Shadow Mountain. He thought it might be in an old mine shaft or something. And what did you tell him? Nothing. I didn't know anything about it. Well, thank you, Geza. No problem. What did you say your name was again? Nancy... Drew. Nancy Drew. Asked a lot of questions. Didn't buy any maps. But she really appreciated your taking the time to talk to her. Be sure to put that in your notes, too, okay? Got it. Goodbye, Miss Drew. Bye. This is the Drew residence. Please leave a message at the beep. I don't need to talk to anyone at home. This is the Drew residence. Please leave a message at the beep. It's Nancy. Just calling to say hi. You don't need to call me back. Bye. This is the Drew residence. Please leave a message at the beep. Hi, Hannah. Bye, Hannah. The patient in the room you have dialed is not answering. Please call back later. Uh-uh-uh. Not till you get me those arrowheads. Looks like a swarrow bloom. Bet wanted me to give you this. Great. I want to buy a small piece of property from them. It must be their response. Bet wanted me to give you this. Great. I want to buy a small piece of property from them. It must be their response. So you do. I have ten arrowheads right here. So you do. You can put them in this. Looks like it's been polished before. If I put it in the polisher, it'll buff up in no time. Let me see what I can do. Here, try these. Looks like a poppy. It's a picture agate. Great. Thanks, Mary. Hi. Can I help you? Got those arrowheads yet? I can't talk right now. Sorry. Hi. Can I help you with something? Hi. That's me. I didn't hear a car. Did you hike in or come by horse? I'm Mary Yazzie. I heard what happened last night. Tough break for the Raleigh's. Getting that place going has been a real struggle for them. So where are you staying? Word gets around. Their property line starts where the back of this store ends. We've talked many times. They rejected my offer. Well, I guess that's that. But as long as you're here, look around. All the jewelry you see, all the rugs, the beadwork, the pottery, they were all made by local artists, including yours truly. So if you want to know something, especially if you want to know how much something is, just ask. Anything I ask. He and I are both pretty talented, just on the side. Someday I'd like to do it professionally, but it would take money to get started, and money is one thing I'm not very good at making. They were no help, although they did offer to buy it back from me. I just told them to keep looking for a way to get it open. Sure, it's right over there. Sure, be sure to check out the jewelry display. I just got some real nice pieces in. There are arrowheads all over this area. 
You just have to keep your eyes open. If you take the trail to Cougar Bend, you should be able to find ten in no time. There are arrowheads all over this area. You just have to keep your eyes open. You should be able to find ten in no time. As long as you don't dig and only collect arrowheads that the rain and wind have uncovered, you won't be breaking any rules. It looks like I only need nine to finish this display. So here, keep this arrowhead. Thanks for your help, Nancy. Those tuning forks are all yours. So what's up? I'm telling you, it wasn't me. So don't go telling people you saw me trespassing, because you didn't. Excuse me. I don't believe it. He swears me to secrecy, then goes blabbing it to some teenager? Oh well, it was bound to come out sometime. My side's no different from his side. I mean, we're in love. What's the big deal? Wait a minute. He didn't tell you anything, did he? You tricked me. Oh, you're good. You are good. Tex knows the Raleigh's and I have been arguing about that property I want to buy. He's afraid if the Raleigh's find out about us, they'll think he's collaborating with the enemy and fire him. Yes. See, I think the real reason Tex wants to keep it a secret is because he's got this rough, tough loner thing going. I think the idea of changing his image scares him. There's a whole bunch of petrified wood on it. Tex discovered it. Every so often, he'll bring some pieces in, and I'll use it in my jewelry or try to sell it. I didn't. He got past mine. Anyway, Tex and I are in love. We tried to keep it a secret, and we blew it. You know, for a city slicker, you got a lot of country smarts. If I had a dollar for every lost mine or buried treasure story I've heard in the 30-odd years I've lived here, I'd have ten horses, two cars, and possibly my own helicopter. It's nothing but a tall tale. Trust me, that's my horse banner. I train him myself. Yeah, they didn't want much for it, so I took it off their hands. Problem is, I still don't know what's in it because I can't figure out how to open it. There are hundreds. A lot of them were probably made by the Anasazi. They lived in the area until about 700 years ago, when they just suddenly picked up and left. If you take the trail to Cougar Bend, there are hundreds. A lot of them were probably made by the Anasazi. They lived in the area until about 700 years ago, when they just suddenly picked up and left. A friend of mine found it when he was clearing land for a new house. I told him I'd share whatever I got for it with them. Silverware? Tell you what, if you go out and find me ten arrowheads for this display I'm working on, I'll give them to you for free. You're mistaken. Shadow Ranch is private property. I never ride there. You must have seen somebody else. He did? I know it's a lot of hogwash. I bought it from the Raleigh's. They said it was full of old junk from their ranch, but I don't know what's in it yet because I can't figure out how to open it. I'd remember if I did because I would have sold it. Silverware from the 19th century would be pretty valuable. Maybe she had a thing for forks. I went out with a guy once who was into spoons. He dangled them. We sat down in a restaurant, and the next thing I knew, he had spoons hanging from every part of his face. Like I said, I went out with him once. They actually used those for something back in the 1880s, but I don't know what. Beads, huh? Let me see what I can do. While I do this for you, why don't you finish that display for me? The one behind you. Thanks for stopping by. Come in again. Ride safely. Catch you later. Got swore it in as sheriff. It was the 4th, so it's like all them celebrations was for me, which of course they weren't. Francis thought up a song and played it on the piano for me. I forget how it went, but it was purdy. I'm lucky to have her for a daughter. Herford Shoup come by with a plant he brung from New York, which he calls Harrison's Yellow. Looked right dead to me, but Francis planted it out back and gave it some water, and already it looks to be on the mend. She's 17 and can read and write good and knows her numbers. Herford's thinking to marry her, but I said she ain't of that mind yet. Francis has got eyes for a young man named Dirk. She says he's from Prescott. Cappy says when she plays a piano, this Dirk makes everyone be quiet so he can hear her good. I ain't never seen her smile like she smiles now. I told her to bring him to the ranch for dinner, but she says he won't come because he is too shy. I wonder if that is the truth. Got a letter from the sheriff over in Phoenix about this Dirk Valentine who is wanted for robbing two banks in a stagecoach. The picture with the letter looked just like Dirk who Francis is sweet on. When I showed her the picture, she got tearful and run off. Now, Dirk is gone, and she won't say nothing about where he went. Dirk Valentine is robbing banks and coaches and trains all over the territory. Francis says he never ever shoots his gun and only steals from people that already got plenty of money. But that ain't true, because some of them trains he robbed was carrying money, meant to pay miners or hard-earned wages. 
He is nothing but a no good greedy outlaw, but Francis gets real mad when I say that. I fear she is still sweet on him, and that she sees him when she knows I am busy, and gets letters from him which she hides from me. Got hold of a note Francis sent to Dirk, and saw where they was going to meet. So I got a posse and we caught Dirk, and now he's in jail. The judge is coming next week, and I hear he is a hanging judge, so Dirk most likely ain't long for this world. Francis won't say nothing to me no more, and says she never will again. Dirk sends a secret letter to Francis, which Mason got hold of and give to me. I locked it up so she won't ever read it. Francis ain't allowed to see Dirk in jail, of course, and if she never sees his letter, maybe she will think he don't like her no more, and, and maybe she will stop liking him. Francis's ma would have known what to do better than me. I wish she was still alive. They hung Dirk at noon. I thought I would be glad, but I ain't. Francis took Brownie in my big saddlebag and is gone. She ain't told no one where she's going, not even Cappy. But I know she will forget Dirk, and when she does, she will come home because she is a smart gal and will figure out that I, I did what I'd done for her. July 4th, 1882. Got sworn in as sheriff. It was the 4th, so it's like all them celebrations was for me, which of course they weren't. Francis thought up a song and played it on the piano for me. I forget how it went, but it was purdy. I'm lucky to have her for a daughter. Herford Shoup come by with a plant he brung from New York, which he calls Harrison's Yellow. <laughs> Looked right dead to me, but Francis planted it out back and gave it some water, and already it looks to be on the mend. She's 17 and can read and write good and knows her numbers. Herford's thinking to marry her, but I said she ain't of that mind yet. My sister says her little girl Ellie got a letter that said Francis went east and was not of a mind to ever return. I hope this ain't the truth, because I miss her something awful. The Harrison's yellow, which Francis said was her favorite flower in the world, is just a pile of brown sticks now. I don't know how to look after delicate things like that, so it is my fault that it died. I ain't seen or heard from Francis in a year. I tell people she's on her way home, but when I look in my heart, I know this is a lie. She will never come back to Shadow Ranch, and it is my fault. I'll just have to find a way to live with it. March 30th, 1883. Frances has got eyes for a young man named Dirk. She says he's from Prescott. Cappy says when she plays a piano, this Dirk makes everyone be quiet so he can hear her good. I ain't never seen her smile like she smiles now. I told her to bring him to the ranch for dinner, but she says he won't come because he is too shy. I wonder if that is the truth. April 16th, 1883. Got a letter from the sheriff over in Phoenix about this Dirk Valentine who was wanted for robbing two banks in a stagecoach. The picture with the letter looked just like Dirk, who Francis is sweet on. When I showed her the picture, she got tearful and run off. Now, Dirk is gone, and she won't say nothing about where he went. August 2nd, 1883. Dirk Valentine is robbing banks and coaches and trains all over the territory. Francis says he never ever shoots his gun and only steals from people that already got plenty of money. But that ain't true, because some of them trains he robbed was carrying money, meant to pay miners or hard-earned wages. He is nothing but a no-good, greedy outlaw. But Francis gets real mad when I say that. I fear she is still sweet on him, and that she sees him when she knows I am busy, and gets letters from him which she hides from me. September 9th, 1883 got hold of a note Francis sent to Dirk and saw where they was going to meet. So I got a posse and we caught Dirk, and now he's in jail. The judge is coming next week, and I hear he is a hanging judge, so Dirk most likely ain't long for this world. Francis won't say nothing to me no more and says she never will again. September 13th, 1883. Dirk sends a secret letter to Francis, which Mason got hold of and give to me. I locked it up so she won't ever read it. Francis ain't allowed to see Dirk in jail, of course, and if she never sees his letter, maybe she will think he don't like her no more, and, and maybe she will stop liking him. Francis's ma would have known what to do better than me. I wish she was still alive. September 17th, 1883. They hung Dirk at noon. I thought I would be glad, but I ain't. September 18th, 1883. Francis took Brownie in my big saddlebag and is gone. She ain't told no one where she's going, not even Cappy. But I know she will forget Dirk, and 
When she does, she will come home because she's a smart gal and will figure out that I, I did what I'd done for her. January 4th, 1884. My sister says her little girl Ellie got a letter that said Francis went east and was not of a mind to ever return. I hope this ain't the truth, because I miss her something awful. June 11th, 1884. The Harrison's yellow, which Francis said was her favorite flower in the world, is just a pile of brown sticks now. I don't know how to look after delicate things like that, so it is my fault that it died. Thank you for holding, and thank you for calling the office of Charlena Purcell. Miss Purcell's latest novel, like Wind Through My Heart, was an instant bestseller. And like so many of her novels... <sighs> never mind. Thank you for holding, and thank you for calling the office of Charlena Purcell. Miss Purcell's latest novel, like Wind Through My Heart, was an instant bestseller. And like so many of her novels, it recently received the Catherine Coop Award for Historical Excellence. Reading a Charlena Purcell novel is like traveling through time to the Old Southwest on the wings of love. Charlena Purcell's office. Hi, my name is Nancy Drew. May I please speak to Miss Purcell? Concerning Charlena Purcell's office. Hi, this is Nancy Drew. May I please speak to Miss Purcell? She told me to put you right through. She even told me to make sure you didn't have to listen to that recording again. You really rate. Charlena Purcell's office. Hi, this is Nancy Drew. Say no more. I'm staying at a ranch in central Arizona, and since she knows so much about the history of Arizona, I thought maybe she could answer some questions for me. Questions concerning? Well, I came across a very old trunk that might contain stuff that has to do with these people named Dirk Valentine and Francis Humber. Only I can't open it. Did you say Dirk Valentine? And his girlfriend, Frances Humber, yes. Huh. Oh, would you hold, please? Hernandez. Hi. Are you the sheriff? Yes, ma'am. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm staying at Shadow Ranch. Oh, yeah. How's that doing? Hernandez. Hi. Are you the sheriff? Yes, ma'am. My name is Nancy Drew. I'm staying at Shadow Ranch. Oh, yeah? I spent a good part of last night out there. Hernandez. This is Nancy Drew. I'm the one who's staying at Shadow Ranch. I remember. In fact, I spent a good part of last night out there. Hernandez. Hello, Sheriff. It's Nancy Drew again. Hello, Nancy. What can I do for you? Hernandez. Hello, Sheriff. It's Nancy Drew again. Hello, Nancy. Driving out the Shadow Ranch is getting to be a nightly thing for me. You got power out there yet? No, but fortunately we have a generator. So what can I do for you? Hernandez. Hello, Sheriff. It's Nancy again. What do you need? Hernandez. Hello, Sheriff. It's Nancy Drew. Hi, what's going on? Of course, I'm the Sheriff. I hear everything. You gonna pull through? It looks that way, yes. They're going to keep him in the hospital for a day or two just to be sure. Good, that's good. Only met him a couple of times, but I liked him. He and his wife, what's her name? Bet, short for Elizabeth. They seem real determined to make a go of that place. I like that. So, what can I do for you? Is there something I can do for you? It looked to me like the main pipe had been deteriorating for some time, only nobody noticed until last night when it finally blew. Somebody playing a joke, that's all. Probably a friend of one of those cowboys out there having themselves a good laugh. I see no reason to think otherwise. Whew, that's quite a theory you got there. But I saw those wires last night. It looked to me like they just worked themselves loose. And the pump house? That was just an accident too. And the fact that both those things happened right after that horse appeared was just a coincidence? Well, until some kind of proof presents itself, there's not much I can do. I'm sorry. That can't be. I know all those boys. I mean, I'm not best friends with them or anything, but I've either known or known of them for years. You'd vouch for them? Every single one of them. So unless and until you get some kind of proof... I understand. Well... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like I said before... I know those boys. Now, Tex isn't exactly Mr. Congeniality, and sure he can get on your nerves sometimes, but conspiracy? Nah. You won't even consider that possibility? Of course I will. If and when you show me proof. Right. Just doing my job. My pleasure. You bet. Anytime. Sure, I'm all done in there. Should I have my deputy take that sign down? Mind my asking why you want to look around? Wait a minute. Dave told me about you. You're the girl detective. Amateur detective. I don't know. Dave seemed to be real impressed with you. In more ways than one, I might add. Did you say phantom horse? Just before Ed was bitten by that snake, this glowing horse came galloping up outside, then went galloping away. Glowing horse? Sounds to me like somebody's playing a joke. 
Friend of Shorty's, I'll bet, trying to get a rise out of him, and probably succeeding knowing Shorty. I know them all. That doesn't mean I'm best buddies with them, but it's a pretty small world out here, and I've either known or known of those boys for years. And they're all stand-up guys, as far as you know? I'd vouch for every single one of them. Out to Dry Creek? I haven't been there in ages. Why? I get the feeling someone's hiding out there. Hiding out? Like a band of desperados or something? Or something, yes. Well, next time I have some time to kill, I'll drive up there and check things out. How'd that be? Maybe I'll take a drive up there when I have some time to kill and check things out. But even if what you say is true, it's not like that horse is endangering lives or anything. The horse may not be, but whoever's using him to divert attention so they can sabotage the ranch sure are. Excuse me? Afraid I haven't had a chance to check things out up there yet. But even if what you say is true, it's not like that horse is endangering lives or anything. The horse may not be, but whoever's using him to divert attention so they can sabotage the ranch sure are. Excuse me? Are you all right? I managed to escape, but I'm more convinced than ever that someone's been hiding out there. Someone who ties in with what's been happening at Shadow Ranch. Did you see anyone? Unfortunately, no. Well, I'll take a drive up there and look around first chance I get, okay? Yeah, the support beams in there are about to go. I was afraid some dumb tourist would knock into one of them and bring the thing down, and I'd wind up having to dig them out. If I'm real careful, do you think I could have the combination? It's just an old shack. There's nothing to see in there. I'm just curious. Amateur detective, remember? I'll lock the place back up when I'm done. Well, if you swear you'll be careful. I'll be extremely careful. I promise. Let's see. Where did I put that combination? Ah, here we go. Nine, two, seven, four. Can I help you find something? Hey, you must be Nancy. I'm the cook, Shorty Thurmond. Welcome to Shadow Ranch. Come on over here and tell me about yourself. Tell me you've called the Raleigh's. Hey there, Nancy. Man, I wish the Raleigh's were here. Miss Nancy, how may I be of service? Got those eggs for me? Pick those vegetables for me yet? Yes. Nancy, I figured after last night you'd be long gone. I know I would be if I were you. That's a great looking cake you made, Nancy. Go get Tex and we'll eat it. Dave can help himself when he gets back. Go find Tex so we can eat that cake. You can find more eggs than that. Sorry, Nancy. I'm kind of busy here. Besides, I gave you that chore because I took you for the resourceful type. You ain't gonna let me down, are you? Sorry, Nancy. You're just gonna have to figure it out for yourself. There's more ripe stuff out there than that. You have talked to the Raleigh's, right? Rats! I promised the Raleigh's I wouldn't talk to you until after they did. So what do you need? Do you have any idea how hard it is to have an interesting conversation with those two guys out there? It's impossible. So call the Raleigh's, then come right back. It was Dirk Valentine's horse, you know. Call them! I'm dying here! That is creepy, isn't it? But the horse, that was even creepier. See? Sure do. See? Well, I was just about to crawl into bed last night, when all of a sudden, this glowing horse comes galloping up outside. It stops and rears and paws, whinnying and snorting. Then it just wheels around and gallops off into the night. Now it's a phantom. Dirk Valentine was an outlaw around here back in the 1880s. Legend has it, he was in love with Frances Humber. She lived right here on Shadow Ranch. Because of him, Valentine was captured and eventually hanged. Ever since, the ghost of his horse has been roaming the desert, cursing whoever sees him with bad luck. Story? All I know is, Ed Raleigh sees the horse, and what happens less than two minutes later? He gets bit by a rattlesnake. You do the math. I'm really looking forward to you and me sitting down and having a nice conversation. Especially with all the weird stuff that's going on. I'm so busy getting all their chores done in addition to my own that I barely have time to talk to myself, let alone to you. Enough of me complaining. What's up? Good. Because if you pick vegetables that aren't ripe yet, I'll be real ticked. You can put them in the vegetable basket that's hanging outside. And one more thing. Sometime today, I need you to build a cooking fire in the pit outside. I'll light it when I'm ready to start cooking. And be sure to fill the bucket out there with water and leave it by the pit. You know, just in case something catches on fire that isn't supposed to. And be sure to fill the bucket out there with water and leave it by the pit. The Raleigh's wanted to have a cookout tonight, and by golly, we're gonna have a cookout no matter who is or isn't here. Now, second thing I need you to do for me is take this. Anything I can do for you now? I need those eggs, Nancy. I need those vegetables, Nancy. You're good to go. I need you to do one more thing. It's Tex's birthday. 
The Raleigh's told me to make him a cake. Now, if I make it, he'll throw a fit. But if you make it, he might actually appreciate it. So why don't you dig a cake recipe out of the recipe box and have at it? I don't care when you make it, just so it's done by the end of the day. The icing's already made. And don't forget to build me that campfire like I asked. Do exactly what you did for me yesterday, and I'll be forever grateful. Start by picking all the ripe stuff in the garden again. Well, I know she says she wants to buy it because she feels spiritually drawn to it. But I think she's got something up her sleeve. My money's on shy. I mean, it kind of takes brains to be secretive. And he strikes me as being pretty much a lightweight in that department. Know what I mean? Oh, Nancy, it's great having you here. I mean, I like to talk, you know? I like to converse, to debate, to discuss. More than anything. Which isn't a bad thing. You're not nosy. Me neither. People like you and I are fascinated by the human condition, that's all. So, who else do you want to talk about? Just proves we're birds of a feather. I've been known to go poking through other people's stuff myself. The livestock will still get water from the windmills, but we humans are going to have to get every single drop of water we use from the faucet in the pump house. And that's going to be a royal pain. Why can't that darn horse do its cursed thing somewhere else? I saw the pipe. It was rusted through. That's why it burst. That and bad vibes from that equine banshee. No. They had no idea when they'd be able to send somebody out here. And if that generator goes, not that bad. I'm in here with no water. I'm terrified to turn the gas on for fear something's gonna blow up. And if that generator goes, I could be cooking in the dark for days. Weeks. Well, not weeks, because no way am I staying here that long. I'm so freaked out now, I'm not sure I can last one more day. Listen to you. Cool, calm, optimistic. I'm a wreck and you're a rock. Of course, you're also dead wrong and totally deluded, but I'm still impressed. When I heard that rumor, I started reading everything about Dirk Valentine I could get my hands on. But the more I read, the more it sounded like he suckered Francis into believing he'd hidden something for her, just to give people something to talk about when he was gone. Now, if you just fill that egg basket for me again, we'll be all set. Music to my ears. First thing you can do for me is go out to the garden and pick all the ripe vegetables. Music to my ears. First thing you can do for me is go out to the garden and pick all the ripe vegetables. You know what ripe vegetables look like, don't you? Do exactly what you did for me yesterday, and I'll be forever grateful. Start by picking all the ripe stuff in the garden again. Basket's outside. Same old, same old. If you bring me all the ripe stuff from the garden, I'll give you a basket to fill up with eggs. And once you're done with that, you'll be good to go. Got one right here. Of course. Nice lady. I mean, for the most part. Gets real unfriendly when the subject of the Raleigh's comes up. All the water to the ranch house has been cut off. If I thought there was a snowball's chance in Tampa that Valentine had stashed any of his loot here, I'd be tearing this place apart. Why? What do you know about it? You betcha. Unfortunately, her daddy was the sheriff. Drop by any time. Pleasure talking to you. Don't be a stranger. Come back soon. For your information, I got those maps because I was hoping there might be a long-lost gold mine or two around here. But like most of my get-rich-quick ideas, it didn't pan out. Apparently, there's no gold left in them thar hills. Or silver or copper or anything else. Now, I don't ever want to catch you in my stuff again. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, no! You picked stuff that wasn't ripe yet again! Oh, well, there's only one thing to do. Sure, anytime you want some, just help yourself. Tex really liked it, by the way. Great looking fire, Nancy! Nice job! I made you that flower Francis mentioned in her recipe. I cut all the pieces out of marzipan using her old forms, but I'll be darned if I can figure out how the pieces go. That's food coloring so you can paint that marzipan flower. But you gotta put it together first. Hey! Nice job. If you really want to get fancy, go ahead and paint it with that food coloring I left out. Food coloring so you can paint that marzipan flower when you're done putting it together. Go out to the chicken coop and fill it up with eggs. Just be careful of that basket. It's kind of old. Oh, no. You not only picked all the ripe stuff, you picked stuff that wasn't ripe, too. You wasted perfectly good food, Nancy. And out here, we just can't have that. We just can't. Oh, no. Looks to me like you picked every single thing that was out there. You wasted perfectly good food, Nancy. We just can't have that. We just can't. Oh, no, you got stuff in here that isn't ripe yet. Picking stuff before it's ripe is a waste of perfectly good food. So don't do it again, you hear? Hey, you're crowding me here, Nancy. I need elbow room when I cook. Some of this stuff's overripe, but I'll just pitch it. Good for you. Hey, you got stuff I can't use in here. Some of it's overripe, some of it's underripe. 
Now get out there and try again. And remember, just the ripe stuff. Oh no, you got stuff in here that isn't ripe yet. Picking stuff before it's ripe is a waste of perfectly good food. Now go back out there and be more careful. Hey, there's stuff that's way over ripe in here. Well, I'll just pitch it. In the meantime, go back out there and try again. Just went through another door, Nancy. Went through another one. Only four to go. I'm just three doors away from you, Nancy. Only two to go. Almost there. Only one door left, Nancy. This is it. I'll be there real soon, Nancy. I'm getting close. Here's everything you'll need. Nope. I'll write a best-selling cookbook. That's what I'll do. Then I'll get my own TV show. Then I'll do a movie. And while they're out here punching cattle, I'll become a gazillionaire. Whoa! Where's a horse's hocks? Where's a horse's frog? How tall is a horse that's 15 hands? What kind of a horse is a Paso Fino? How can you tell if a horse is colican? What's the difference between a bay and a chestnut? What tribe bred the first Appaloosas? What part of a horse is most likely to be hurt when it founders? What part of the saddle should you always check before you head out on the trail? What is a mule? Let's see you trot. Now let's see you lope. Nope. Ready to try again? Ready for some questions? This here's your final question. That's one out of ten. Two out of ten. Got a long way to go. Three down. Seven to go. That's four right. That's five. You're halfway there. Bingo. That was number six. Seven down. You're in the home stretch. Eight right. Just two to go. Well, you answered all the questions right. And I can tell by the way you sit, you ain't gonna go falling off for no good reason. So you're free to ride outside the corral. Just don't go galloping all over the place. Because if you bring old Bob back all hot and sweaty, you can kiss your cowgirl days at Shadow Ranch goodbye. 9.5. How about that? You did it. 10 seconds flat. Close, but no cigar. 10.5. 11 seconds. 11.5. 12 seconds. 12.5. That's a five second penalty. You'll never get under 10 seconds now. Five second penalty. Start over. You went off course. Start over. You got one out of five. You got two out of five. That's three out of five. Four out of five. Congratulations. Congratulations. It's got a rock wedged in it. So it does. Here you go. I'm kind of surprised at you. Why? Figured you'd be good for some laughs out there. You weren't. So which one are you? Need something? I ain't gonna have to lecture you on leaving your horse standing with his saddle on again, am I? You still here? Not that my family's any of your concern, but my sister did work for the Raleigh's. Back in Phoenix. She got fired, she got mad, but she's over it. Okay, till you finish doing what I told you to do, you and me got nothing to talk about. The Raleigh said they were gonna be inviting some young ladies out here. I take it you're one of them. I'm the head wrangler. You want a ride, you come to me. You prove to me you know what you're doing, I may just let you. Why not? I brought three horses in this morning. Hardly fair to keep them tied up all day if nobody's gonna ride them. I saw something. Just what? I still ain't sure. Nope. Now if you want to ride, listen up. First thing you're gonna do is never ride unless you're wearing a hat and gloves. And unless you got a full canteen of water. Then you're gonna saddle and bridle your horse. No need to brush them. I do that when I bring them in. Then you're going to lead him to the mountain block in the corral and mount up. Then I'm going to ask you some questions. You can't ride outside the corral till you get all the answers right. Long as you talk to me first. When you're done riding, you're going to dismount, hook your horse up, take the saddle and bridle off and put him back where you got him. Always keep your gloves with your saddle. Yep, the bay over there. Name's Bob. If you get off when you're on the trail, don't tie your reins to nothing. Just drop them. And barring an earthquake or something... Old Bob will stay put. That's who I'm putting you on. Because if you want to know the truth, they gave me a raging case of the willies. I've been around horses all my life. And I've never seen a horse move the way that one did last night. Maybe it was because it was glowing. Maybe it was something else. But it was weird. But would any self-respecting trainer around here bother training a horse to do what that horse did? And you left your horse just standing there all saddled up in this heat? You want to chit-chat, go find a coffee shop. You want to ride, then ride. You and your friends, if they ever show up. You ain't gonna last more than three days out here. Yeah, home in your nice soft Betty by. City folk can't take living out here. Too rugged, too much work, too dangerous. With the Raleigh's gone, the ranch is real short-handed. Before you ride, you're gonna have to go see if Shorty's got any chores that need doing. 
Gotta get a canteen from him anyway. If you got everything I told you you need, and you think you know your stuff when it comes to horses, old Bob's all yours. You're doing just fine on old Bob. If something ain't broke, why fix it? Go see if Shorty's got any chores that need doing first. I hate hearing him whine about how overworked he is. Feed the chickens and the horses in the corral first. Could be fatal if you mess up, so don't. Check to see if whiny, I mean Shorty, has any chores for you first. I took a bridle apart, oiled the pieces, and left them in that can on the shelf. You can't ride till you get the bridle put back together right. I put the bit next to the can. You can wear that hat over there. It's Mrs. Raleigh's. Got a helmet built right in. Her gloves are on the saddle you'll be using, and you can get a canteen from Shorty. If you get good enough, like, say, you get your time below ten seconds, and if you can lasso the sawhorse, like, say, four times out of five, that don't mean it was my sister. No, she didn't. What gave you that idea? Hey, you've been snooping, haven't you? In the Raleigh stuff, in my stuff, my business ain't none of your business. And that includes any sisters I may or may not have. You need to go. I'm busy, because it makes me look bad. I figured no one would ever find out, and when you did, I just got all flustered like. Of course not. Janie got me curious, so I checked him out and wound up iron on. They're decent people. Fact is, my sister can be kind of a flake. I'd have probably fired her too. Of course I saw it. Just didn't feel like talking about it, that's all. Old Bob's all yours. So what if I do? Me and Mary Yazzie? Of course not. Why ain't said more than ten words to her since I got here? You're imagining things. Gonna have to earn your own. If you can. Always something else going on. Like Ed Raleigh getting snake bit, or the pump house blowing up. Plus that horse is fast. Probably couldn't catch it anyway. Looks like the kind of rock you'd find out by the ghost town. Couple of weeks, I guess. Ain't no hurry to go back, I can tell you that. And I'll tell you why. I'm just telling you what I know. You don't want to hear what I got to say, then quit asking me stuff. Last time I was out there, my horse acted real strange. Even tried to throw me. Was like he saw something I couldn't. Something he didn't like. Something that was telling him to stay away. Was she hurting anything? Defacing rocks? Setting fires? Threatening some endangered species? I wouldn't worry about it. Sounds to me like you're making a mountain out of an anthill. I set up some barrels and a sawhorse so you can do some barrel racing and practice roping. Whenever you're out there, I'll watch you and time you. I'll give you your very own lariat. You can practice as much as you want whenever you want. Just don't go walking off with my rope, cause I'll be watching. But there's still hope. This little vacation of yours ain't over with yet. No hurry, if you last that long. Just stay out of trouble. Yahoo. Shorty's chores need doing first. All right, that's it.